talked about. You gotta put it in perspective. I must say, the staff don't look too happy. I think we're all just getting over the early start, sir. Still, they'll soon settle down. Mm. If you don't mind, I will begin at the beginning. It's a new day. Let's get going. One, two, three. Four, five, six. VIG! I don't know what's wrong with her, but she won't get me down because it is. Last time my slogan was. Feel the burn? This time, it's let's burn this place to the ground. And now. Rock and roll! Kick off Rocktober right. Our feature presentation. Morning, everybody. Brand new Kevin and Bean Show. It's Tuesday morning, the first of Rocktober. A lot of rock. You you had your own drop for the first time all year. (laughs) (laughs) What? That's okay. I mean, it's October for the first time all year. No, I know. Okay. I know it is. That's right. good. We should have practiced So, because that. we we played that uh, yeah. Yeah, for every, 10 years. Every yeah. October. Every October. Rocktober, yeah. really. Rocktober. Right, right. Exactly. It is Rocktober. Yeah. 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 Okay. I like it. It's exciting. It's invigorating. <laughs> do you want to do it again? Just really? like cleaner? No. No? No, I like oh, it just like it, it was. Yeah. We're not even on the air yet. Okay, yeah. cool. What the hell? We're just practicing. This is rehearsal. Okay. That's why, why I can, this. why I can say the F word. <laughs> hey, um, I got to tell you, Muggs is a new man. Yeah. He, uh, look at him. Oh, baby, Muggs. Thanks, Muggs, for clarifying. <laughs> he touched his face. He's like, hey, uh, like I shaved my beard off. Yeah. Did you notice? <laughs> <laughs> He's got... It's got a baby face, you guys. It's so weird because I think about mugs as being, I don't know, what do you guys think? 70, 75, right? On a general a day-to-day rough basis? 70. A that's, rough 75. That seems, yes. live. that seems mean. I'd say 65. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's but all when you he, guys. But he, sh- he shaves his beard off, and all of a sudden, he doesn't look a day over 55. Right? Yeah. That would be a huge difference would, for him. It would be hard for him to even get that AARP discount at the movie theaters <laughs> right? now. Yeah. I think I'm worried you're going to get carded if you try to buy alcohol this week. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why did you shave it? I was telling Allie and Jensen this. It's it's very hard to hang uh, on. Allie and Jensen, is this story worth it? Um, I don't know. It's I, not great. <laughs> okay. um, you can embellish a little. Okay, if you yeah, want. make yeah. something up in the between yeah. to make it better. All right. My beard becomes a homeless poo beard when I don't when I don't groom. Why it is all. there poop in your beard? Because there's. Remember we did that story about how there's feces in your beard. There's feces in your beard. Everybody's beard. Uh, there's feces everywhere. But yeah. I don't remember a story about being. In your I don't beard. remember the beard part. <laughs> yeah. That's no, what I don't you either. heard. Okay. So it's a, it's more of a personal upkeep and maintenance kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I like to every every so often the first of the month shave it all off, let it grow back nice and fresh and beautiful. But why is there poop in your beard? I mean, there's poo on everything we touch and. Your beard is like a magnet for everything. So mm-hmm. there has to be some sort of fecal matter in it. And fecal matter is the best possibility in that case, unfortunately. All right, so there's poop on your face then too, right? Not now. It's fresh and so clean. Okay. I just realized like he's going to be looking for dates and stuff when he has the beard again. And people will be like, I'm not kissing poo beard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you've True. screwed yourself with poo beard. Yeah. Poo beard. Somebody wants to date a just over 18-year-old. I'm your man. This is malicious fecal distribution. <laughs> it is. Weird. It's okay, true. Real weird. All right, I'm sorry I brought Muggs into that <laughs> conversation. I was just trying to... And I'm sorry I asked for the story. I should have tried to compliment him up. on look look better. I but, want uh, apologies up top. 65. At that, no, 70 to 75. Uh, right. Yeah. At a rough one at that. At a rough one. All right, this is this may sound like an odd uh, question, but have any of you ever been uh, picked up by an animal and thrown into the air? Yes. I'm not talking about falling off of a horse. I'm talking about being picked up by an animal and thrown into the air. Yes, Kevin, go ahead. No, I'm just kidding. There's no possible way. <laughs> I, there's, oh, I thought that, you had. That has never happened. No, I just, it sounded like such an absurd question. Oh, well, it's what? happened to me. It's happened to me. What? what? I was oh, because up. you have like your donkey or whatever. Well, I, my cow. It was one of my cows. It was cow. Buttercup. And I can't remember. Don and I were just talking about the other day. I cannot remember now what it was. If I had, if I was giving her a shot or giving her a pill or I was giving her something, there was some sort of maintenance that was being involved. And she was tiny too. She was, I don't know. She probably weighed about, 
Eight hundred pounds, maybe something yeah, like that. What were you giving her? Yeah, um, a I shot. Think I think it was a shot. Yeah, shot. antibiotics right. or something. Yeah, yeah. she was real tiny. Right. So antibiotics she, is a weird thing to call it. Yes. So she uh, she was not in the mood for that, and she put her head. Okay, now it's going to sound creepy. She put her her big head between. I'm sorry. I keep Go playing. ahead. She she put her big head between my legs. Nope, not at all. Nothing like that. I mean, it sounds just like that. Can you no, do me a favor? Can you talk a little slower? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, she put her head between my legs and literally just lifted me off the ground. All 200 pounds of me just lifted me off the ground. In and, ecstasy. And right? threw me into the air. Wow. Threw me into the air mm-hmm. just with her head. Mm-hmm. This is funny because uh, Bean always swears that his cows loved him. Well, they did. But and I, no, and I, I, every time he tells a story like this, I go, hey, maybe your cow didn't love you as much as well, you Well, this thought. cow wasn't having it that day. But I mean, you know. My, my, having my, what that day? Was not interested in getting a shot. So so she picked me up and threw. But it was an exceptionally small shot. And threw me into the air, though. And I mean, I'm literally, I am six feet off the ground tumbling through the air, not knowing what's going to happen when I land, whether she's going to stomp on me or what's going to happen. And it was, I'm, I'm going to be frank with you here, it was fairly terrifying. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't expect something like that, especially if you're your own beloved pet that you've had since she was 10 months old. Sure. So I say all that to tell you what happened um, in Utah uh, Friday evening, Antelope Island State Park. There's a woman there named Kaylee Davis who sees a bison about a quarter of a mile away. And she turns and starts walking toward her friend, doing nothing, by the way, to uh, uh, annoy or upset or, 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 you know, give the bison any reason to charge that distance. But that's exactly what the bison does. Bison charges, picks her up, throws her in the air, and she lands and breaks her ankle. Uh, as a result of it, and there, and she wakes up with the buffalo just sniffing at her Ooh. and digging his, you know, his hooves into the ground. Nope, again, okay. what? That's not nothing like that. Okay, the friend that she was with is named Kyler Bourgeois. He was also attacked by a bison on the island back in June. They are the only two reported attacks on the island this year, and it happened to two people that are friends, and he was there at the second tossing. By a buffalo. <laughs> Let's change that wording. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, she's just eating a salad. And the next thing you know, Stop she gets tossed. Don't Ew. talk about Kyler Bourgeois that way. <laughs> Stop. Stop nope. Out. It's not what this is about at all. This was a Kyler Bourgeois' first time back on the island since he was attacked by a buffalo back in June. <laughs> and then his friend gets attacked by a buffalo. It's just such a weird freak accident. Is it? Yes. Maybe they just hate people. If you're, but no, because they have tourists all the time on that island, and it's only two times it's happened in the entire in the entire year. She's a quarter mile away, walking away from the buffalo, and he rushes her, throws her in the air. She ends up with a broken ankle and, forgive me, Ali, a gash on her oh. leg. Hmm. So, I mean, I just have uh, I have sympathy with this lady because I know exactly what it feels like when you get tossed in the air like that. <laughs> And, and you don't. Know, and you thought some of us would also share that? <laughs> well, I thought Miss Plasma. When you were kidding and said you were tossed near by an animal, he went, "Oh, yes." Oh. He like didn't, he believed it. He believed it. it Why, in what circumstances would any of us ever? You were his been... Kyler Bourgeois. <laughs> 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 Look, Ali, didn't you do? <laughs> you did a bunch. You, <laughs> you did a bunch of Channel Five stuff in the morning with like llamas and I things did. like that. I it's did. Very, and other animals, they I'm ever sure. Throw too. you in the air? A it, none. But they could have. My point is, they could have. At any moment. That's why I was such a good journalist. That's why you were always dressed as a llama, so that they accepted right. you as right. one of them. Thank mm-hmm. you. So, I'm about to glad. so my point is, it happened to me and it happened to this mm-hmm. lady, and that's why I shared it. I don't think anyone should take Kyle Bourgeois up on his offer no. of heading to Antelope Island. No. No. People you should stay away Kyle. from Kyler Bourgeois for more reasons than normal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is going to sound like a weird question, but have you ever been tossed in the air by an animal? I love the idea that he gets some newsletter or Google alert for this. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, we, we have, I mean, we have People meetings, if that's what sure. you're asking. Right, meetings. <laughs> All right, let's talk about today's Kevin and Bean show, shall we? Rabbit, rabbit. Couldn't wait for the animal stories for that one, but we're going to do that not. a little bit later on. We have a Petros Papadakis on the program today talking yeah. about the California Fair Pay to Play Act. I'm intrigued to see the way this plays out. Uh, there's an HR memo that's out about the dress code here at work. 
Yeah. Well, I thought it was mean, Kevin, that they put it out while you were on vacation, but we did want to talk to you about it. Yeah. <laughs> Showing too much cleavage, my friend. <laughs> it's distracting. <laughs> we're, we're just men, okay? We're trying to work. <laughs> Uh, Halloween costume decorations. Or have you already started working on that? Yeah. And what are Halloween costume decorations? Halloween decorations. <laughs> another question we're going to be asking. <laughs> is what I meant to say. And uh, CM Punk hey. will join us in the studio as well. Yeah. Fantastic. So that's coming up. We'll take a break. We will come back with what's happening next. This is the Kevin and Bean Show on K Rock. Allie, what's happening on this Tuesday? Well, we've been had, everybody. We've been had. We've huh? been had. I hate being had. So over the weekend, one Republic's uh, Ryan Tedder sent the internet into a frenzy. He teased a collaboration involving Adele, Beyonce, mm-hmm. and Coldplay's Chris Martin. Holy moly. Yeah. That's, uh, that's big news. Yeah. He was asked at the Global Citizens Festival if he had any secret collaborations on the new album. And Ryan told the radio station, we have one song featuring Beyonce and Adele and Chris Martin with the piano solo and the bridge. People lost their minds. I cannot wait to hear this, right? Right. I know I uh, texted you immediately, Allie. You did? With excitement. Yes. I'm screaming. It's, uh, it was all too good to be true. Oh, Oh, come on. Not happening? Is he a lying liar who lies? Ryan Tedder is a lying liar (gasps) who lies. What am I going to do with this tattoo? Oh, well, I mean. You can't get people that excited and then then just, how are that sentence supposed to end? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's a, a great point. Great point, Bean. Um, at least he clarified all of this on his Instagram stories. What are you doing, Ryan Tedder? Also, who's following Ryan Tedder? Uh, right. He said he was only joking. He kept showing screenshots of, like, news reports of it. And then he'd write, kidding and joke in That's the That's not a joke. Slides. There's no yeah. joke there. That's yeah. just a lie. It's just yeah. a flat-out lie. Take it easy, man. It's okay. He's really angry. I'm um, really upset. So then he wrote, come on, people, with like 10 N's. And then, I mean, as if it's not bad enough, you add a giggling puppy and a clapping Snow White onto your stories. Like, you are throwing it in our face, Ryan Tedder. How dare he? Murder. And then at the end, he said, all that said, wouldn't that be a fire collab? I'd stream it. I think it's real. Well, here's what I hope. It's not Here's what I hope. it's real. I hope Adele, mm-hmm. Beyonce, and Chris Martin do a song together mm-hmm. that doesn't involve Ryan Tanner yeah. at all. Yeah, oh, leave that liar dude, out. That's what son. I hope. Good idea. Right? Murder. They just contact another producer. They're like, we've got a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> a great collab. Listen, Timberland. And the song is called Ryan Tedder Sucks. Wow, you are really angry at Ryan Very Tedder. Mad. Well, you don't get your hopes up like that. How no. high could your hopes have been? All I mean, you my should have seen his text. at the top. Yeah. <laughs> he sent me an article and just wrote in all caps, wow. I think it was an OMG is what I wrote. Oh, was it? Way. Okay. And then my just course. a bunch of eggplant emojis. Okay. Oh. Oh. And I was really excited by oh. it. I don't remember the emojis. But he must have been near a cow. Uh, <laughs> real tight cow, right? That's real weird. Um, you yeah. describing that cow? Oh, what just happened? Murder. For you, you too. Describe that cow in a way I've never heard a man. You didn't have to bring up his calves. Yeah, I, right? I said she was tiny. That's all. Really I said. looked like She's, she had been working I said out. She weighed like eight hundred pounds. My point was she was a small animal to be able to toss a big dude in the air. That was my point. Hmm. Boy, show's going to be good once it gets started, though. Is it? Trust us. It's already good. Three minutes, man. We're going to get our act together. Um, Hey, for all of you sitting at home, just like, when is that Siegfried and Roy biopic coming? Uh, It's coming, guys. It's the life story of magicians and entertainers, Siegfried and Roy. It's coming to the big screen. It'll explore the history of Siegfried and Roy, who met on a cruise ship in 1960. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I kind of love it. Um, uh, driven by their common passion for the art of magic and illusion, they went on to develop their famous act and eventually establish themselves in Las Vegas as one of the city's biggest acts and performing for more than 25 million people. Did any of you ever see them perform? Mm-hmm. I did not. But, I that did. Is, but that is someone who was thrown in the air by an animal. <laughs> That's team. true, yes. Yeah. Carried off. I did watch it one time, oh. and it was really? 99% just posing. <laughs> really? Like, like no magic? <laughs> they'd walk to the other side of the stage and just pose, and then everybody would applaud. I'm like, God, is there That's any true. magic involved in this at all? <laughs> That's great. What's happening? <laughs> what if there was...
was so much magic, but you were just focusing on the posing. They're fo- they're just yeah. And I didn't realize <laughs> that they just missed made- it. There's been tigers they appearing. Been tiger appearing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it did was- their 2020 interview already air, Allie? I think I have like. Siegfried and Roy facts? No, but I thought you uh, probably Why, like ought to record one? all 2020s. Uh, yeah. Is there a new one? A? Yeah, there's supposed to be. I thought it was this week. They were they were going to sit down and go through oh. the whole thing, and you know they say new information and the whole deal. I mean, they're they're back on the radar now. Hmm. I uh, I don't watch 2020 because okay. it's on at the same time as the day on. Okay. Uh, can I cast it really quick? Yeah, please. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Channing Tatum. <laughs> Why? It's good. It's a good casting. Okay. Um, I'd watch that. See? Sold. Wrap it up. Which one was attacked by the... Um... Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Channing Tatum has to cry and stuff. Oh, my man. He's so sad. Standing over him. Blood all over him. Is that the wow. the accent? Yeah. What exactly? Where do you think they're from? What happened? They're from Mars. Okay. What happened to the tiger? No. What happened to my friend? I thought they were German. Uh, they no? are German. Why oh, okay. are you Persian? Okay. What's <laughs> happening right now? I thought he sounded <laughs> a little Hispanic is what this I was getting my, from him. My best friend. Ah. <laughs> All right. I mean, we'll, We uh, only pose. The whole show is posing. It really is. How can he was. pose with no face? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Montecor finally uh, passed away, right? He just, just Again, natural you, causes. Now I don't have tiger facts. He knew his Aged name. Out. That's well, the name of the... Nobody remembers Montecor. No one does. No one it remembers was a pretty, Montecor. It was a pretty big story when he attacked Siegfried and or Roy. Yeah, 1972 or Siegfried whatever that was. Siegfried and or Roy. <laughs> really? even remember no one knows. Attacked. Zero was people like know. 20 years ago, but guys. Oh, name. why'd you do that, Montecor? We took so good care of you. <laughs> Golly. I think I'm firing Joseph Gordon-Levitt and hiring Jensen. Oh, yeah, I'd be good. It needs to be in this movie. All right. Help. I'm bleeding everywhere. Some birthdays. Bad reconsider again. Uh, Christopher Titus. Happy birthday. Brie Larson from SNL, Beck Bennett. Zach Galifianakis. (gasps) And, oh, my God. Bob from the Bomba. Right? Isai Morales. Remember when um, his girlfriend, Rosie, told him um, that she was pregnant and he was pouring the shot. And he goes, what do you want me to say? It's not my first. Won't be my last. I booed him in the theater. I was like eight. I'm like, boo, Bob. You don't say that. Oh, I had hots for Bob, though. Not Richie, which is weird. But, I mean, he died. Hey, we're on the air. What? We're on the air. That's what's happening. It's the Kevin and Bean Show. K Rock. And now, a moment with Bean. Well, you I can't mean. You get people that excited yeah. and, then, and then just. How are that sentence supposed to end? <laughs> That's a great point. A great point, Bean. That was a moment with Bean. You guys knew what I meant, though. You know where I was going. Yeah, of course, we always know where you're going. Come on. It's fun to hear you trying to get there. It's about the journey. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm very concerned, by the way. I saw a post online last night about a, a woman who was traveling in Spain. And uh, she posted that she loves Spain. It's her favorite country. She loves going there. But she's worried about the bad influence that they're <laughs> allowing in. Mm. She claims, and this could be very upsetting, especially for you, Allie, because as a, as a female traveler around mm-hmm. the world, I'm, I hope you've never encountered something like mm-hmm. this. She claims that a creepy old guy... How dare you? ...came up to her and just started saying words and pointing at her boobs. Oh, dear. And mm-hmm. she, tur- she turned to get away, Listen. and he just kept chasing after her and pointing at her boobs and pointing <laughs> at her boobs and then pointing at himself and pointing at her boobs, and she didn't know what the hell Listen. was going on. But he wasn't like, little grandpa. He wasn't but, like pointing at her boobs, then pointing at his face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. He, was de- he was making his intentions very clear, and no. she, was un- she was unnerved by it. She was able to get away and escape into the crowd, but she'll never know why that creepy white dude was after her And it like sucks that. for her because it was the first time she's wearing this new shirt she got from Goodwill. Oh, man. <laughs> so what's your version of that story, Kevin? <laughs> I was lucky enough to a vacation in Barcelona last week. Mm-hmm. And I like that because um, there's nothing of home. There's all all different people, all different politics, all different commercials. Wait, except this for is, cars for kids. They do have that. Is, this is breaking news. You're telling me when you go to another country, yes. it's all different people and all different And that's stuff what I enjoy about it. All I different enjoy politics? being able to leave every single thing behind and move and just try to make my way through life. See, and plus, my it? favorite soccer team is their FC Barcelona. Mm-hmm. So I was aware that other countries were like yeah, we so get different. Okay, yeah. <laughs> 
You're missing a point. So it's not the same as here. So obviously, I'm not really talking to anyone because mm-hmm. I don't really. I know enough Spanish occasionally to get by if I can mm-hmm. sort of pre-plan it, but I don't really. I'm not really fluent in any way possible. So I was, imagine my surprise when I saw a a woman that was maybe 25, 26. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Perfect for you. Just guessing because (laughs) I didn't really have an extended conversation with her that had a a Kevin and Bean Quitters Never Give Up shirt with my face on it. What the heck? Yes. In Spain. Yes. It's weird. So now I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, does she speak English? Does she listen to the podcast? Does she have a friend who listens? Like, why would she, how would she get this shirt? Sure. How greedy is Kevin that he's looking at this hot 25-year-old Spanish girl, and the first thing he thinks is, and does she have a friend? No. <laughs> no, I'm I saying. I mean, he's playing on his whole weekend. <laughs> I'm saying oh that my, my face. I'm Kevin. She's wearing me on her shirt. Yeah, this I, I got to take advantage. Yeah. <laughs> I can't miss. Does my, her friend have a friend, too? My <laughs> face, my face is on her shirt Mm -hmm. so that was super weird so i i went through all of these ways of how do i do i habla inglés is first thing okay Mm -hmm. do you listen do you speak english Mm -hmm. so that way maybe you can listen to the podcast it makes sense sure Mm -hmm. uh no no she doesn't speak english no okay and not thrilled that i'm speaking with her at all Mm -hmm. but does she speak the international language of love We'll get to that. You guys can and tell me how I could have handled this better. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'm trying to think of how do I say that my face is on your shirt? Because mm-hmm. that's a weird. Probably a better way in is my face is on your chest. That's probably. <laughs> that's, that I mean, I was pointing. I was. I was pointing at her shirt. Uh-huh. Where on the shirt? I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> top right there at your face. I mean, looking back at it, I was I was pointing at her boobs, okay. basically. Okay. Yep. Sure. And then well, I wait, was, then on, I was pointing at my face. <laughs> serious, <laughs> serious question I mean, here, though. <laughs> Do you think that she put dose and dose together that the person on her t shirt was also the person in front of her? Um, I didn't really have that much time to think through it. I don't think so. No, okay. I was trying to figure out. Hey, this is so weird that stop with the music. This is so weird that that's my face that's on your shirt. Right. And I don't even understand how this is happening. And let's make it happen for real. So then I start thinking, okay, how much Spanish do I know? I need to communicate with her. Uh, T-shirt. How do you say? Ah, uh, shoot. I don't know. Um, how do you say Kevin and Bean show in, in Espanol? Frijole. Okay. No, that's not going to help. <laughs> like, <laughs> like um, cabeza. My, my. Oh, no. That's head. Oh, I no, know, you right? Oh, no. Head. no. <laughs> Yeah, but, so that's all oh. I I couldn't think of I couldn't think of the word face. Oh, oh no. But yeah. I could come up with cabeza. Okay. You certainly asked her for So then I was okay. pointing at her chest. At her uh-huh. t-shirt, at your face. Uh-huh. And then, then at cabeza. my face and saying cabeza. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can your boobs uh, cabeza? Not, I mean, I can see how she read it mm. that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, there's really no other way to read it, but uh, sure. How exactly should I have handled that? Because at that point, now all I want to do, <laughs> that sounds even worse, <laughs> is just take a picture. Because, oh, no. Be, no, because it's so <laughs> weird to run into somebody in Spain that doesn't even speak English that has my face on their shirt. Yeah, I mean, it's so yeah. weird. It seemed very rare that I, you would do that. I don't know how to ask for a picture, but I do know that uh, I was talking to her back as she was walking away from and me. Running away. Pretty, running pretty away. quickly. Yeah, you have the cuffs <laughs> on, so. How exactly, what should I have... I mean, done to handle that better because I feel any, like maybe I didn't handle it a hundred percent. Any limited Spanish? <laughs> yes. Do you know what shirt is in Spanish? No. Camisa. Oh, I do. Okay. You know what? After you See? say it, I recognize it, but yeah. in that moment, I can't think of anything. So if you were like, except for head, camisa <laughs> es mi. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't think of perfect that much. Mm-hmm. That, that's all you had to do. But she was too busy running away from you to yell that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. No, it's not. It's not that I couldn't yell that. It's that that didn't come to my mind. Kevin knows most of his Spanish from a book called Hookers for Beginners. <laughs> So. Oh, it's bad. <laughs> I, let me ask this question because seriously, because uh, Jensen made the joke at the front. Um, how did she get that T-shirt? If she doesn't speak English and clearly doesn't listen to our show, do you think it was 
a gift from a friend? And if so, what a terrible gift. It would mean nothing I mean, to her. I mean, that's what I, I went through a few of those options, and I just thought, no, that's a terrible gift. Yeah. She I doesn't mean, have you, an idea. You, you mm-hmm. joked goodwill. I mean, I guess it's te- technically I mean, possible. that's probably the leader. Well, I, thought I, don't it, know. I, I thought it was like when a team loses the Super Bowl and they send all those championship shirts to, like, Zaire. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, because the Buffalo Bills are the most successful NFL franchise of in all Africa. time in Africa. Yes. Yeah. So maybe they just had a bunch left over and they were like, they where are we going to send them to Spain? Or I hate to point out the obvious um, us ladies collect a lot of t shirts, if oh, you know what I'm dudes. saying. Dudes. Some tourist was over in España. Mm-hmm. Had a good time with Chickadee. Son of a bitch. Left a party shirt. person had my shirt. Yeah. Wow. So if you listen to Kevin and Bean, you boned a chicken span and you left your shirt. <laughs> Call now. Kevin's hot. <laughs> Kevin and Bean on K Rock. K Rock. Got this email from HR. Just a reminder that the appropriate about the appropriate dress attire. While we have a relaxed dress code, it is important to remember that we interact with clients and coworkers in other departments. Mm-hmm. She goes on to say, while jeans, longer sh- uh, shorts, and t-shirts are okay. Please refrain from wearing short shorts, crop tops, and revealing clothes. Kevin. And I just like to say, let's not put that all in a negative category. Right? <laughs> right. It's not all bad. Or right? at least in the morning hours, you can wear that stuff. Right. And then maybe like a 930 change into something more appropriate. I can get out of my crop top? Yeah. <laughs> who's uh, uh, who's wearing um, Showtime Lakers-style short shorts, by the way? That's Reno 911 question. shorts? Yes. <laughs> who's wearing those? <laughs> um, thank God jeans and shorts and T-shirts are okay, by the way. Believe me, it has not escaped me how lucky we are to have the kind of job where you could be as casual as that at work. But how, how much further... Away from that are people that she has to write this memo. Well, I mean, the memo ends with her saying, if you are uncertain if your attire is work appropriate, please feel free to check with your supervisor. That sounds like a hot job. <laughs> like, yeah. That's basically a modeling job. Like, that's people like, come, come on in. Am I hot or not? Come that, on remember in. Remember that TV show? Yeah, you look hot as hell. With Thank a laser you. pointer? That is not hot. Move on. <laughs> also, something to think about. Um... This has obviously been discussed for a while. Mm-hmm. Yes. For them before it gets to, to memo stage. Before yeah. it gets to a memo stage. So what exactly has been going on behind the scenes? I need to know. And is it one person that this is directed to? They just Great don't want question. to tell that person? Or is it multiple people we've with had, multiple right? We've had Karina on the line for about uh, five minutes. Oh, for oh, me? Oh, great. Yes. Oh, oh, great. Yes. Oh, good. So she's the person to ask. Yes. Hey, Karina. Good morning. Let me just say, by the way, that Karina is about the best employee that we have here at K-Rock. She's, she's the most efficient. She's Wonderful. the most efficient, yeah. the smartest, the sweetest. Everybody loves Karina. That's why <laughs> <Thank> we, <you. laughs> we want to know why you're you're pooping on our parade here. <laughs> we we want to know why you're putting out such mean memos, Why Karina? you got to be the man all of a sudden? We've been hiring purely I'm on boring. wardrobe, so. <laughs> what uh, what happened? What led to this uh, this email going out company-wide last week, Karina? I mean, Ali touched on it, and that's exactly it. Um, There were multiple complaints over the past couple weeks. I mean, it's been summer. It's been really hot. So some of the people at work have decided it's okay to, you know, just wear whatever they feel Mm -hmm. is comfortable. Right. And um, So far, so good. Go ahead. (laughs) A lot of people have taken notice. (laughs) Uh, Who's the whistleblower? Tell me now. (laughs) Oh, there, there are so many people. It's not oh, even just one. Really? Oh. <laughs> are you yeah, telling me so, that people go to a, literally, they go come into your office and they say, I'm uncomfortable by how hot somebody <laughs> is in that work. Honestly, I work. the I person next to me, too hot. Karina? I don't think they're wording it as too hot. You <laughs> Karina, I've yeah. set up a meeting with you because I am too horny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? Multiple people, Karina? Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Is Are there multiple people who are the problem? Oh, good question. Yes. Oh. Yes. oh. She says yes because she can't say no, so, of course. No, well, also, I have that email in my drafts for days, right? Mm-hmm. Every day that I was going to send that email, I'd bump into someone in the halls who was wearing a crop top or some short shorts. So I didn't want to send it that day because I knew that person. Oh, right. Oh, I see. Oh, right. 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 I saw Karina by the bathroom. Right. right. <laughs> oh wow! She's checking everybody's clothing. Well, so I, I have Karina. To wait until one day. <laughs> uh, one day it was really hot, so I put on my Daisy Dukes and then just a, a bikini top. But maybe <laughs> when I was spraying myself with water walking mm. down the hall, was that too a much? Too far. Okay. Yeah. With an okay. intern holding a fan on you. Yeah. 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 Yelling, yelling, so that was too much. You were okay. yelling charity car wash outside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was just, just eating a burger. Yeah. And letting yeah. it drip Super down my weird. face. Yeah. Okay. All I right. can see that. Specifics. Did anyone wear a bikini? 
I mean, not at work. Well, that's what we're talking about. You mean on? Hold on. You mean a work function? Work function? But by the way, concerts are work functions. You yeah, wear anything. Work functions are fine. That's a different. Okay. That's a whole okay. animal. Yeah. Okay. And you're not. And you're not talking about like the you know the pool parties for Coachella and stuff right, like that. Exactly. Okay. You're no. Talking, you're talking no. about in the <laughs> office. Exactly. Um, Who is wrong it? With, what's wrong with crop tops? By the way, what's the problem with crop tops? Too much boob. Oh, it's stomach. I mean, too, too much stomach. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it personally, but people have you know brought it up. I mean, but we would like to say that we're in favor of it. Yes. We, I don't, we were never asked about this before the email went out. Yeah, was there a vote that we missed? No I vote. think they're asking. We'd like to vote no. that that's fine. We By want, the way, yeah. that's, a, that's a great idea. Why does one or two, why do one or two people get to come in and change the dress code for the whole company? We should put a, make it a company vote, and then we can decide at K-Rock whether we're okay with crop tops yeah, snitches get stitches. Karina, um, can, I, can I ask you a question? Were these uh, were these complaints coming from women? Oh no! Uh, actually, women and men. <gasps> wow! Because oh. if they were coming from women, it would be short shorts, right? It would be short shorts, yeah. and um, I don't like her flat tummy so much. And total haters. Yeah, yeah haters, haters. 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 Mm. But men also. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So someone did come into your office and no, multiple people. No, but I'm multiple. saying she's <laughs> right. saying that also. Yeah. That's a, that's insanity. Can I just look. You guys are going to think I'm a caveman here. I just can't imagine a man complaining that a woman is wearing too little. Well, I just can't imagine if he's that. got a constant boner and he's trying to go on a sales call, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> See, Karina knows. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kevin and Bean on K-Rock. How about some animal stories? Maybe a raccoon or a story about a dog. Maybe a baboon or a story about a frog. A story about a cat or a pizza rat. A story about a minx or a story about a lynx. Animal stories in the news. Animal stories to cure your blues. Animal stories just for you. Let's find out what they're up to. You can have him uh, change the intro to take out the minx at some point. Sad. I just Sad. ask Sad. him. Yeah. Appreciate right. Part-time yeah. bean. We're always uh, grateful when the listeners think of us uh, outside of listening to the show. It's a real uh, it's a real compliment to us that you ever think of us beyond uh, 10 a.m. Uh, and I know that a lot of listeners thought of me in particular when they saw this story because I received it by the dozens. A woman forced to bite a camel's testicles. What? To escape after it sat on her. Oh, <laughs> That old story. Wow. How many times do you hear that happen? Here's what happened. A man, a woman, and their deaf dog are driving through Louisiana. They're a few miles west of Baton Rouge, and they stop at this little truck stop here that happens to have some exotic animals. So the husband, for some reason, throws some... <laughs> truck stop. Why are you... <laughs> what? Don't, 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 don't walk <laughs> over that thing. <laughs> there used to be a lot of these places in America, and thank God most of them have been closed down because it's just very sad to pull off the side of the road and there's just a bear in a cage. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants that. That's no, that's no way for an animal live so this uh, the husband here decided to throw some dog treats for his dog let his dog run around a little bit while they were stopping you know for gas and whatnot and some of the treats went into the camel enclosure so the dog chased went under the fence and chased after so now the dog is in with the camel Mm -hmm. so then the woman is concerned about her dog so somehow she gets into the pen with the camel as well and the camel sits on her very nearly (laughs) crushing her The camel, by the way, weighs 1,100 pounds. Wow. So she had to do whatever she could to get out from under the animal. So she bit the camel's testicles. Oh, what do you right. think her thought process was? Like, that's my only way out, but mm-hmm. I, think I so. don't want to do that. Yes. But yeah. also, it's my only way out. Yeah. But I, I really think, don't want to do I that. I think this is a 127 hour situation. We're going, mm. the last thing I want to do is cut my arm off, but otherwise, I'm just going to die here on this mountain. That's exactly what happened with this lady. So she bit his testicles. Here's the quote I bit his balls to get him off of me. Uh, that's what she told police anyway. She was taken to the local hospital, her condition unknown. No injuries to the camel were reported, and nothing will be done to the camel. The camel was just doing camel things. So nothing should be done to the camel. Just she bit his balls for God's sake. I know, sakes. but what I'm saying is, a lot of times balls, 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 bal
A lot of times when there's any kind of animal and human interaction and it goes poorly, yeah. for whatever reason they put the animal down, it's, yeah. it drives yeah. me crazy. But this camel didn't do anything aggressive. He'd never gotten out. He never caused any issues or anything like it. He didn't do anything wrong. He all of a sudden just had this, this dog and this person in his pen. He <laughs> sat so. on her. That is not, uh, I don't think, what anybody was expecting that day no. to go down. No. Kevin, you're not a big fan of uh, raccoons, no, uh, as I am. My wife has a uh, family of raccoons that she hand feeds every night She's at sunset. Again, the dumbest smart person I know. <laughs> you and her both are so incredibly intelligent. And then when it comes to animals, you're so dumb. It's, it's not going to be funny when they turn on her <laughs> no. and they eat her. And they but will. She needs to go to the Raccoon Cafe, which is just opened in the Ukraine, by the way. It gives customers the unique opportunity to interact with and give belly rubs to Liza and Bart. They are a lovable pair of raccoons that have recently been adopted from a local farm when they were just babies. And now, just like we have cat cafes and puppy cafes, there's a raccoon caf- cafe in the Ukraine. Like, the Ukraine doesn't have enough going on right now, by the way, <laughs> in the news. This seems low on the priority list. <laughs> the uh, exterior of the cafe pays tribute to the masked mammals with a mural of Guardians of the Galaxy's Rocket Raccoon and right. other raccoons dressed up like superheroes, including Spider-Man and Wonder Woman. Mm. It's a huge hit, by the way. It, uh, the space, uh, you can put up about 200 visitors per day through there, and customers wait up to 30 minutes for their chance to interact with and feed the pair of raccoons. Now, these are tame raccoons, Kevin. Would mm-hmm. you look at them like you would at a dog and play with them? Uh, probably not, no, because it's a wild animal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's, what's the Even difference? Even though you say it's trained, it's a wild mm-hmm. animal. What's the difference between a camel at a rest stop and Liza and Bart in the Ukraine? Because... Is, they should be out in the wild. This is insane. I feel like... I feel like you can have enough space for a raccoon to enjoy its life, and I think a raccoon is going to be well fed and well slept. That's what slave owners said. Weirdo it's tourists, lots of love. No, this is gross. So you say no to camel, camels at the truck stop, and no to raccoons. Correct. At the, yes. Okay. Both. All right. All right. I, I will allow it. By the okay. way. Cool. A uh, Georgia woman went to fill up her gas tank before work early last week when a deer leaped over her head, kicking her in the process. <laughs> She's just, there's uh, there's video of this. She's standing pumping gas in Brunswick, Georgia, and she thought she was being robbed. She got hit in the back of the head, and that was her thought is, oh, my God, somebody is robbing me right now. She wasn't facing in that direction. She stood there for a minute to process what happened and saw a deer scampering off after just jumping into the air and hitting her. With her purse. Oddly enough. (laughs) (laughs) Doesn't say that here, but, Allie, you saw this video, right? It's insane. Just it's out insane. of the blue. She, gets out of the blue. she doesn't see it jumping. She doesn't no, hear it coming. No. Nothing. Wow. And the fact that she was running late for work anyway. And then she's like, and now I get to explain to work that <laughs> I was attacked by a deer. <laughs> Just amazing. Hit the head out of nowhere. <laughs> Here's a lady named Jill Hicks. She is driving down the road in Tennessee, and she spotted what she thought was a rabbit darting across the busy street. She slowed down, then stopped, and then she realized it was actually a kitten. She was very surprised. It did not run from her, so she put it in the car, climbed all over her like a kitten does, got in the floorboard under her feet, and stopped a couple times, and then rested into her nap. She finally gets home with it. She already had a dog and a cat, so she set up an area in the garage for this kitten while she figured out how to what to do with it, how to find its owner or get it adopted or whatever food water litter box a little bed made out of a cardboard box a little sweater for her invited her neighbor to come over and see the kitten and the neighbor did and said hey that's a bobcat <laughs> what <laughs> no <laughs> that's a bobcat that's not a kitten what you don't want to you don't want to adopt a bobcat she oh said uh, thank the lord for my neighbor because i sure was about to put that baby in the sink and get it give it a bath and put it in the bed with me so instead, she called the For Fox Sake Wildlife Rescue. Ooh, the I'm bobcat, happy about that. Which is a great name. Which <laughs> uh, they took on the bobcat and now will be cared for properly and then uh, released back into the wild. That was uh, almost a uh, bad mistake. And uh, finally, on this edition of Animal Stories, I don't know if you guys have been following the story, but ever since September 10th, a yak named Meteor has been on the run. <laughs> you know how you see these stories from time to time where a cow will get away from the, from the, uh, the slaughterhouse? And it'll go on the run, and then they'll everybody will rally around it, and they'll go, oh, this cow is so sweet and so smart. We're not going to eat this one. We're going to spare him, and we're not going to have him, right? Even though the other 400 cows on the <laughs> truck are now hamburgers. Mm-hmm. Well, this was a yak named Meteor, and I wasn't aware that in central Virginia they were cooking up a lot of yak can burgers. You, can you eat yak? Yeah, sure you can. Oof. 
He uh, he escaped September 10th. He was finally found last last Friday, and I was all excited when I saw the story because I thought it was going to be the same sort of deal where he was going to get some sort of a food parole, and he wasn't going to end up being a yak burger. But in fact, he was hit by a car and killed. <laughs> That's a great ending to this story wow. and to this bit. Wow. This has been... That is wonderful. I, wish, I mean, I wish I had better news. No, this is wonderful. I, I really, Meteor seemed like an awesome yak. Yep. But that's how his story <laughs> ended there. A and that's cold, my great news. Cold and dead on the asphalt. And this has been Animal Stories. Animal Stories in the news. Animal Stories to cure your blues. It's the Kevin and Bean Show. Hey, Rock. First of all, it's Rocktober. And second of all, you know what that means, right? <laughs> Do it, Kevin. Come on now. Do it, Kevin. I was working in the lab. <laughs> it means that we're not, we're not far from the Monster Mash. We're not far from Halloween spooks. We're not far from two eyeballs. All of our oh, favorites. the best. Halloween is almost here. And we thought today might be a good day. Being the first of Rocktober, we thought today might be a, a good day to start talking about Halloween decorations. You know, there's been a uh, there's been a holiday uh, creep for every holiday uh, in recent years. Meaning it, it gets starts earlier and earlier. Earlier and earlier. Oh, I thought you were talking about yourself. You're, you're, you're like a too. holiday creep. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which is my username on some of the message words. Uh, no, it de- it definitely gets earlier and earlier. In fact, um, there are already. I mean, the uh, the local theme parks already have their their Halloween yeah. Horror Nights mm-hmm. up right True. right now. I mean, we're giving away tickets to Universal Studios Hollywood Halloween Horror Nights this week on K Rock. I mean, the, the time is here. Already. Who started on their Halloween decorations already? I'm looking at you, Allie. Uh, by started, you mean finished two weeks ago. <laughs> really? Two weeks Absolutely. ago you finished? Absolutely. Mid-September for Halloween. Yes. Now, well, outside or inside? Um, I don't do much outside. Okay. Because um, that invites kids to think they can trick or treat at my house. Which is like, <laughs> ugh, go away. So you spend your Halloween night like I do with the lights off and laying on the floor to make sure it looks like nobody's home. Face, I mean, I, I face down on the floor. I don't go that don't far. Move, don't but... move. Don't move. Don't move. They'll leave eventually. Donna, get down. <laughs> But I, I like to decorate early because then you can enjoy it through the whole month of October. Mm-hmm. And then I usually keep stuff up until the first week of November. So what are your decorations? What do you oh, do? Oh, gosh. Do you I've up? got everything from um, all my mantles have uh, black lace spider web. It's a very classy Halloween. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of, um, I have glass pumpkins that all light up, which is Gorgeous. Oh, that sounds cool. Oh, it's really that sounds pretty. gorgeous. Yeah, guys. It's really nice. I've got um, a ton of gold skulls and silver skulls. Um, I've got cute little um, orange light-up pumpkins that I, I've i strewn all over the place. <laughs> strewn. Whatever. I don't know the word is. I what are you, Elvira? Really, yeah. I really, <laughs> really like Halloween. And I remember a couple years ago, I went to The Authority to me you did. on That's Halloween, true. and I asked Mr. Danny Elfman, oh. I said, Danny, when is it too early to decorate for Halloween? And he looked at me, and he said, I'm sorry, I don't even know what you're saying. There is what no those words too mean? early for hmm. Halloween. So I was like, I'm doing it. Pete and I got to go to Danny Elfman's house one time, and it was Dio de los Muertes. Is that right? You nailed it. Yeah, you nailed yeah. it. I mean, yeah. I mean, 365 days a year. Yeah. yeah, it was always that, and oh, every single so inch was filled with stuff. Mm, magic, Ali. Uh, I don't mean this in a uh, in a bad way, uh-huh. but a lot of people who are shut ins and don't have <laughs> <Weird>. visitors <laughs> okay. ever at all, any time, mm-hmm. don't even bother with the decorations because they're by themselves. Yeah, and like what's the point? Like old, you hear about old people. Like yeah. why do I put up a Christmas tree if I'm right. the only one here, and then I just have to take it down? Right, you know? and and you say that because um, that's you. Um, but I actually do have friends, friends. Um, and oh, they, and they the come way, over and she'll invite them over. Yeah. yeah. And, and they come and in your um, house. Yes. People come into your house Yes, where you live. Yep. Ugh. I know it's kind of gross. Yucky. Um, but it's very select, uh, amount of friends, but yeah, everybody loves my decorations. They have to. Well, well your this decorations is, sound fabulous. This wonderful. is the first year I will be putting inflatables in my front yard. See, oh, now that's my question. Yeah. That guy first now. Year ever, the yeah. inflatables. Okay. Is that. All right. Do we, are we, okay. is that okay. right? Danielle had, you guys okay. understand the question. Yeah. All right. Danielle, Great question. Are Danielle, we? Danielle had one from when she lived in Orange County. When Before we dated, she had mm-hmm. this uh, big cat, this big black cat kind sure. of thing. Mm-hmm. That when you pass it, it like turns and goes like meow. And I was like, that's fine. That's cute. But then I bought the killer. Uh-huh. 
The killer. A, a nine and a half foot Beetlejuice sandworm. Oh, Ashley Escada has two of those in her yard. Well, that's too many. But one. <laughs> okay, okay. The one. <laughs> one I'm, is fine. I'm going to have one, and we're uh-huh. putting it up this weekend. I, I support it. Ten feet almost. Yeah, that's wow. fun. That's an inflatable? A big inflatable. Can I add to that? Are because the inflatable? I've been. Are the inflatables lean? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Honestly, they're, because they're like. not for me. But like can, I have a neighbor who puts up all of these different inflatables. How many? And, how many? How many? Well, here, I'll give you the perfect example of just the one that drives me crazy okay. is one is a giant pumpkin and then it turns into Santa Claus and whatever. And he just leaves it up throughout the whole season. Oh, that's just changes wait, it, turns it out into Santa Claus. Yeah, Santa Claus. It's and it's like a. It. Oh, got it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's it seems that does like, sound what's like it turns into like Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> it seems like a half hearted. Effort at let's just put some some inflatables. That out does there. sound lame, but yeah, I, again, okay. can I remind you? It's a ten foot Beetlejuice. Sandwich. Okay, I mean that's much. Better. It does sound cooler. Yeah, that's have you better. seen um, the lighted glowing witch hats? No, I've been to your house. You have trees. Yes, you could put these witch hats throughout the front. Mm. They're a. Uh, Adorable. Okay. All different colored witch hats, and they light up because there's a light in the middle. Of Link it. me. Yeah. Oh, no problem. Okay. Uh, oh, look real good. Bean, you Let's, don't do anything. Um, I don't think we're do. I don't think we really do ho- much Halloween. Hmm. You love Halloween. I do love Halloween. Huh. I don't. I don't think we do much. Halloween. Do you? If you found out that like one of your friends or something was doing like a haunted house, would you? Would you like uh, no. judge them? <laughs> so I don't, awesome. No, not at all. Are you going to wait? Do wait, a wait, wait. House? No. Wait, no. wait. Oh. Wait. He no. wasn't. I thought you were going to ask if he would go. Oh, I no, definitely you definitely would say, oh, Are you judgmental? Judge. Yeah, you yeah. No, I wouldn't okay. judge you. You think that's okay? Yeah, it's fine, Kevin. It's fine. It depends on it depends on how well it's done. Hmm. You know, like if it turns into Santa Claus later. <laughs> yeah, right. like, no, I'm no, not in. <laughs> not doing that. All right, it's just lazy. Break, you guys. I think it might be fun to find out where the Kevin and Bean listeners are in the decorating process. Yes. What is their strategy? Uh, this year, if it's different from previous years, or do they have a go-to set of uh, decorations that they pull out every year? Uh, how into Halloween decorations are you? How much effort do you put into it? How much time does it take to put up and take down? Uh, are you living in a neighborhood like Kevin where you've got other people who are doing it up for Halloween and it bugs you or you love it? Really, mm-hmm. kind of anything Halloween decorations. I know it's uh, early for some Halloween stuff, but it's, uh, no, it's according, according to Ali, you're already late on your Halloween decorations right now. But we want to hear your thoughts on the topic at 1 800 520 1067. Halloween decorations, what's up? We'll talk to you next on K Rock. It's Kevin and Bean on K Rock, K R O Q. It's not too early to start decorating for no. Halloween, no. for God's sakes. No. I don't think it is either. By the way, I'm looking at this list of the uh, the best selling uh, Halloween decorations on Amazon right now. There's some very cool stuff I have not seen before, including bloody decals that you can put on the steps leading up to your house that looks like bloody footprints. Yes, yeah. that seems like it would be a cool item, right? Yeah. All right, let's take some calls. One eight hundred five two zero one zero six seven. Let's start with uh, Vanessa, please. Line two. She's in Whittier, and she joins us on K Rock. Hey, Vanessa. Hey, I actually have the sandworm, too, in my front yard. All and right. I love it so much. It's so cool. All right. My people. <laughs> yeah. When did you decorate? Did you just start? No. Um, probably about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago. Whoa. I started wow. so, so right after Labor Day, you put up your Halloween decorations. Yeah, and that's actually late. I wanted to start at the beginning of September, end of August. I respect it. (laughs) She's disappointed uh, in her progress. How wacky do you get with the decorations? How many would you think you have? Um, I just put up, like, the stickers, like, the decals on the wall. Um, I have some, like, the bat lights. I, like, just the, like, light stick on the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Some of them I lead up leaves all year round, but the rest I just add, like, the lights around it. All right. So you you decorate year-round for Halloween. Kind of, yeah. All right. So you had, okay. you had the 10-foot sandworm in your front yard in September. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to your uh, your future, Jetson. Very cool. <laughs> Let's try Sarah up next. Huntington Beach, line three, please, on K-Rock. Sarah, hi. Hi. How are you guys this morning? We are very good. Thank you. Happy Rocktober. Thank you. Uh, same to you guys. So, um... My family, for Halloween for my family, is basically Christmas for most families. And so we start September 1st. Nice. And basically, 
we take it down only for Christmas Day, and then everything else goes back up. <laughs> only for Christmas no. Day. <laughs> what a waste yeah, of time that is on the 24th and the 26th. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in fact, uh, my now husband, when he and I first started dating, it was like the day before Thanksgiving, and he was like, uh, you know... Halloween was last month, and my response to him was, how dare you? Halloween is year-round. Yeah. Yes. Halloween yeah. is forever. Exactly. All exactly. Right. And my my younger son's birthday is on Halloween, so, oh, you know, it's kind out. of a thing with us. Did you guys name him Damien? No, no, oh. we didn't. We well, didn't. His name is Finn. <laughs> you're not as down for the cause as you thought. <laughs> yeah. You missed it up. You're a little bit of a poser, we'll Sarah. Got to be honest. honest. Got to be honest. A little, little bit of a faker. All right. Thank you for the call. Let's go to Jordan on line seven, Kevin, because this is your kind of Halloween celebration right here. Jordan, welcome to the Kevin Beach Show, my friend. How are you? Hello. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's my daughter, Willow. Oh. Oh, oh Willow. hey, Willow. Hi, Willow. Okay. Hey, Willow. Thanks, oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you, Willow. Well, well, first time listener. So, Jordan, it sounds like you're going the extra mile. You're doing something that Kevin will especially love. Well, we're all about when it hits the first, you throw up those decorations big time. But last year we thought, oh, my God, we're going to get a fog machine, get that creepy fog thing going when cool. people walk up to the door. I do love that. Love it. Yeah. Except we got a smoke machine. <laughs> oh, it's oh, a fog so, machine. It wasn't a fog machine. It was a smoke machine. What is it? Your smoke detectors went off? No, everything. It wasn't like it's not a dry ice thing where it was crawling on the floor. Right. It was like smoke, <laughs> like you were cooking a thousand steaks at the same time. <laughs> that is some solid work right there. <laughs> yeah. We did our best, man. We tried, but and suddenly we're just like fanning. Every door is open. We're panicked. It's like. We didn't want this. Right. <laughs> it's technically scary, though. Yeah, it was yeah. terrifying. Yeah, it was really you. scary. Yeah, see, it was really Mission scary. Mission accomplished. <laughs> exactly. All right, Jordan. Thank you for the call. Willow, you as well. We appreciate you listening. Let's go to, um, oh, we got some good ones here. Let's go to Juan. He's in Anaheim. He's in a war with his neighbor about Halloween decorations, you guys. Hey, Juan. Hey, party people. A Halloween What's up? war. What do you got? Um, yeah, so. This year, uh, starting what was it Sunday, we uh, we started our Halloween decorations, and I did a full blown uh, uh, graveyard scene with zombies coming out of the ground. Ooh, We're doing a projector nice. in the uh, in the window, so it looks like zombies are trying to get out of the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only problem is, I have uh, like ongoing Halloween war with my neighbor, and I feel like I nailed it this year until I came outside yesterday, and freaking Jeff. Always a Jeff. Yep, and he he built a damn near uh, full size pirate ship with full life size uh, skeletons as pirates. Wow, so that's unfair. Jeff took it too far. Jeff for the win. <laughs> wow, what I does he like? Jeff won this round, right? <laughs> you know what? Jeff the dick. <laughs> This sounds personal, you guys. I mean, can you put as one of your graves in the front yard, Jeff? <laughs> oh, I already did. He's the very front one. Quad is going to spend. Hey, Dad, Dad. The, he's going to spend the next eleven months trying to figure out what he can do to get back at Jeff next year. That's fantastic. Thank you for the call. Appreciate that. Um, by the way, dumb uh, question because I don't get out much. You know how there are some streets where every neighbor does Christmas and yeah. it becomes a tourist attraction. People mm -hmm. drive around to see all the lights. Is that the case with Halloween streets too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen some Halloween towns. I mean, okay. like there's a my street, for example, is very dark and it doesn't have sidewalks, mm -hmm. so there aren't very many kids that come around. So we would decorate for a while, and then we're like, "Who are we doing this for?" No one showed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not a good place. But then there are other places where they all decorate. Last for the most year, part. last year at our new house, we didn't know what to expect because we had just moved there, and we gave out two hundred candy bars. Oh, full my size? God. Full you, size? We're full you, size house. Okay, yeah. good. Wow. Full, full size. size? What? How rich are you, Jensen? <laughs> we're going to give out Jensen's address. I also think kids came back and pretended they were in new costumes. Oh, for oh, sure. Yeah. Hey, it's me. <laughs> I'm a bird now. <laughs> like, same let's, talk to, uh, let's talk to Ivana. She's in San Pedro, line one. She is another year-round Halloweener. So this is ridiculous talk for her on the 1st of October that we're just now discussing Halloween decorations. Hey, Ivana. Hi. Hi there. So we keep up. We're really big horror fans. Even my son, he's four. His favorite show is Tales from the Crypt. His favorite movie is Chucky. That's what he chose to be for Halloween. Mm -hmm. um, we just keep everything up, like skulls, pumpkins, vampires, Frankenstein, up all year. And then we'll just add, like, 
spider webs and stuff just to make it just like, like one spider web. All right, now we've done it. <laughs> so what what is the neighborhood reaction in July when you got all this Halloween stuff up? I don't think anyone really minds. A lot of people leave all their Christmas stuff up and they, they're too like lazy to put it back or anything. So oh. You know, we're Ivana is so judgy feet. about them. No, no, right? <laughs> She's they're like, just lazy Christmas people. Those grossos. <laughs> it's like everyone in Ivana's neighborhood is paralyzed or something. Oh, jeez. Wow. That, well, Maybe. I'm just saying, that? I'm just saying they're, uh, they're unable to perform simple tasks. Mm. I mean, sounds like. I. I also always have, like, crazy hair and stuff, so maybe they just think we're devil worshippers or something. Oh, okay. I mean, are you devil worshippers? <laughs> no. You're not. No, okay. and the funny thing is I'm, like, super Catholic. I come from, like, really European family, but I've always just been really into horror stuff, so. Uh, well, good for you. Sounds right. like you and the family are having fun. All right, let's squeeze in yeah. uh, Michael, please, Palmdale. He's up next, line seven. This uh, this goes to your your rule, Jensen. It sounds like you have on one giant inflatable per house. Yes. <laughs> That's the only thing he That's puts the only out. Thing I allowed, yeah. Michael, hi. Hey, how you guys, guys doing? We hey, are good, Michael. thank you. Good. What do you have? Yeah, so I got a twelve foot Frankenstein inflatable. Whoa. I also got inflatable like huge pumpkins. Mm-hmm. And I got like a thousand dollars worth of stuff around my house. I got like a uh a skeleton fortune teller that tells your fortune every single time you walk up. No one of those one of those huge blocks. They're like sensors also. I got a bunch of sensor things from like Target. And I think they have her uh, every single time after uh, they go on sale, fifty percent off. I just stock up on everything. I like it. I got it. tombstones, spooky, I got and everything. a bargain. Uh, Michael, the twelve foot Frankenstein. But is it yeah. e- is it easy to install? Is it does it take? A, I mean, yeah. I, I'm doing it for it's the an first inflatable, time. So. For God's sake, you, you just put blow it air up. in it. Let, let me speak to my people. For God's sake, so Michael, don't listen to that. It's sort of cheap. You know what? It, it's a it's a hit every Halloween night. Just take pictures in front of it. Yeah, it's okay. Really easy to set up maybe like thirty minutes. Yep. It's awesome. All right. Like it. I He's mean, if it. I didn't have a fence in front of my yard, I'm pretty sure I'd allow pictures. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an Instagram famous house. Yeah. All right. And you also should have a, a great deal on the new Chevys, too, if you've got that many inflatables in front of your house. <laughs> you are on one today. <laughs> That's right. It's Kevin and Bean on K Rock. K Rock. K R O Q. Q. Hey, guys. Um, if this California law that Gavin Newsom signed uh, yesterday or the day before, if this goes into effect as intended, does that mean the NCAA just won't play any schools in California? Well, we just I don't know how they'll react to that. the Pac-12? I don't know how they'll react to that. That's, if, a, that's an odd question. Well, we will ask our friend Petr, Petros Papadakis. He will certainly know the answer to that coming up just after 8 o'clock. And then we're very excited... <laughs> To welcome the legend himself, CM Punk, into the studios here at the World Famous Care Rock. There's a lot of controversy about this guy. A lot of people want to know what he's going to do next. And we also want to talk about his excellent new movie just in time for the season called Girl on the Third Floor. CM Punk in minutes on K Rock. Allie, what's happening this Tuesday? Guys, they are dropping like flies on Dancing oh, no. with the Stars. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, who cares? <laughs> no, it wasn't something important. <laughs> no, it's Dancing with the Stars. But uh, we know Christy Brinkley. She fell. She's out. She had her daughter, Sailor, who um, is now dancing in memory of her mother. <laughs> her mom's still alive. She just got hurt I mean, and couldn't is she, dance. She's is wearing she that really... ribbon on her dress. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is she really alive if yes, she's not she's... on Dancing with the Stars? That's she's a in solid the audience. question. I mean, she's are you in the living... audience watching her daughter. Are she's alive. You, you might be she's alive, look... but you're are saying, you living? You're saying, yeah, she's like looking, you. you're saying she's like looking from above me? Yeah. No, I'm saying she's actually in the room watching the competition. <laughs> there's oh, no. a scary there's man a in the window. staring in the window. What is he doing? That is terrifying now, especially after seeing that Movie. Right? Not good. Go try and use a drill, which you're bad at. <laughs> By the way, I just saying that's that was a in hell, the movie. It's a hell of a cut down. I, I think most people who see the movie, and I guess we'll talk about when he's in here, won't even know it's him. There's certain. He doesn't. He looks, He'll be like, "What is John Hamm doing with all those tattoos?" I know he does look John Hammish. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm not mad at. No. And he gets to. Let's be honest. He gets to bone a good-looking ghost person. Yeah. I mean, They're finally. never good-looking ghost right. people. Yeah. This one's young and hot. That's the way to go. Yeah, if you're going to get a ghost. Right. Yeah, get a hot ghost. Get a hot ghost. Get a hot ghost. Said it for years. <laughs> All right, I was talking about Christy Brinkley yes. and how and she's dead. Like Rest in peace. Rest, Rest in peace. In peace. Um, but dropping like flies because guess who else is now out? Not Sean Spicer. Don't say Sean Spicer. No. Um, almost as bad. Ray Lewis. 
Oh. Yeah. He um, tore some tendons, I guess, in his no! foot. Like he had done um, with the Ravens as well. But apparently, yeah, dancing is murder on your feet. Well. Because <laughs> he... Cause he... Uh, so he's out, wow. is what I'm saying. He is out. So if you were tuning in for him... No need to watch anymore. Also, like, so, what, what are you doing with your life? Also, right. why are you watching for him? Very wrong. <laughs> How do they handle that? If the point of the show each week is to eliminate another celebrity, if mm-hmm. you're losing one to illness, you just not send anyone else home that that week. Yeah, maybe they just don't have a loser this week. But I Lamar, mean, it's still Sean Spicer's the loser. But as far as like in the game, you mean Sean Spicer is um, just ahead of Lamar Odom, who's in last place. Mm. Okay, but. so. This is a... It's a real battle for last. Real sad. Real sad for everybody. You guys, Chevy Chase was at a recent Caddyshack event at Atlantic City's Borgata, and he was heckled. He was holding a Q&A following the screening of the 1980 classic Caddyshack. And at one point, a female audience member just yelled out, You're boring! <laughs> <laughs> Where would he? Which is the greatest heckle ever. Was it, was it Joel McHale? What, <laughs> wouldn't you think that that would be the only place where you would assume everyone would love you? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Right? And if you're and Chevy Chase. Caddyshack Q&A. Yes. Absolutely. You're not there unless you love Chevy you're Chase. Boring. You're boring. This so, isn't funny. <laughs> Chevy Chase and the moderator asked her to sit down and then asked to have security escort her out. An audience member then shouted, Jane, you ignorant slut. In reference to a skit that he wasn't even in. Yeah, why so, so soon? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a Jane uh, Curtin and Dan Aykroyd sketch. Yeah. So seems uh, like a bad audience. Altogether, uh, not not fun. But I just think that's hysterical that a woman would yell, "You're boring!" Like that's her. Like that's her heckle. That is pretty good because there's no comeback to that. It's more. No. It's more honest than it is a heckle. Like yeah. she feels that way. Yeah. This is not my kind of comedy. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. Come on, man. You're missing the point. He, uh, notorious pleasure to work with. Yeah, that's what I understand, yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. So um, fun. Bean, what's going on in your in your homeland? What now? A British pub is hoping that they've broken a Guinness World Record after they gathered 433 people named Nigel in one place. <laughs> I did see the Nigel <laughs> come get together. <laughs> Bean, it sounds like you picked a good time to move, man. Between the Nigel Fest We did and it! Brexit. The Nigels! We did it! <laughs> what the hell? Imagine how long it took to put that together. Well, Nigel Smith... Hey, who cares about Brexit? We did the Nigel thing! <laughs> <laughs> He's the landlord of the Fleece Inn in Brentfordton, England, and he said he organized the Nigel Night event at the pub in response to learning that no babies named Nigel had been registered in Britain in 2016. He's like, we got to bring the name Nigel back. You know how we we'll do it? A bunch of us meet at this pub and we talk about how cool it is to be named mm-hmm. Nigel. What? So they saw the story and they decided they could not ignore it, so they decided to make plans for Nigel? Oh, my God. I assume that's a file. I don't get it. <laughs> it's a, uh, they're only making plans for Nigel. Okay. Who is that? Is it XTC? XTC? Yeah, that's yeah. A, no, it's a file. Oh, oh wow. God, I'll babe. take it back. Don't even put it in the file. I'll take it back. <laughs> oh, no, you're going to no, have to, you're gonna have have to, to go through you're the You're going to have to take it back then, too. Yeah. Okay, but can I just try guilty now and you just can. pay the fine and you go can, home? You can, but you still have to go to court. Yeah. Oh, man. It's more of a fix the ticket. I feel like that song wasn't even like... No, not hit. It's like no, an it's album a big K Rock no. song, though. Yeah. It's a very okay. big K Rock song. I remember K-Rock hearing song. it as a kid because right. it yeah, just yeah, made yeah. me laugh because we're only making plans for Nigel. Guys, that would was you be. the whole song. That was the song, yes. Would you be upset if you found out, let's say you lived in this village where the Nigel Fest was happening? Mm-hmm. Would you be upset that you couldn't go to the Nigel Fest? Like you weren't allowed just because in? Because I'm not Yes, you were not allowed in. Because oh, you're like yeah. Dave or whatever? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You kind of ticked off a little bit. Like looking from the outside through the glass. I could see that being. Why can't I be a Nigel? Nigel Palooza. Hmm. I like it. Do you? I'm going to be going to a lot of events Bean like loves that. nonsense. Very soon, you guys. Yeah. Although I have to say, the last time Bean was in England, he did send me a picture of a golden retriever in a pub. And I don't know if I've ever been that happy. Yeah, like, just a pub dog. Everyone needs a pub dog. Pretty sweet. <gasps> oh, man. Nothing wrong there? Yeah. All right, good times, you guys. Let's talk some birthdays. Is CM Punk still looking at us through the window? No, 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 he, kind of no. Okay, he left. He, he heard that he's, last report, and he's, he's gone. He's terrifying. <laughs> just as a human, or no, in no, his because movie of, because we've just seen this movie. The movie yeah. okay. He's terrifying. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, he needs to figure out how to use tools better, right? 
You, you can tell them. I mean, that's certainly like, I was, part of it. I yeah. was really mad about the the whole drill. Like you right. obviously you didn't charge it because you can't charge it right. when there's very minor point. In the I movie, mean, though. there's a lot really of really unimportant. It seems like the weirdest thing to take home from the film. Well, really an unimportant part of the movie. There's literally goo coming out of the where you plug in the drill, so yeah. you couldn't even charge it. How so. about a little more concern for Cooper, the German Shepherd, and oh. a little less worried about the drill? Thanks, I mean, Cooper. listen, every dog needs a fluff and fold. I Let's said not, that uh, for years. Let's not give anything away here. Slight spoil. What? Slight spoil. What? what? Although not really. People might no. want to go see it now. <laughs> That's not a spoil. Okay. And she has been seeing it for years. I That's can vouch you. Thank you, <laughs> yes, Kevin. Some birthdays for you. Zach Galifianakis, Becca Bennett, Brie Larson, Christopher Titus, and my God, how many times have you guys seen La Bamba? Once. Once. What? Are yeah. you serious? I think me too. Yeah. I think just once. One time in the theater, I think. Are one you time. serious? Yeah, I no, you so. treat it like it's your Star Wars, and I'm yeah. like, does she seen it more than once? I've seen, I think I've seen La Bamba about 30 times. What? Yeah. We were on... Never mind. Okay. Did you go to La Bamba Con? I'm, I wish. <laughs> People are just yelling, Richie! It's the everywhere. only thing they do for a whole weekend. <laughs> I tried to change my name to Donna. There's one guy next door at the Big Bopper Con. He's like, oh, oh. I wish, wish they made a movie. That's so sad. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. Two weeks in a row, Big Bopper Con reference. Yeah. <laughs> guys are making fun of my XTC reference. <laughs> Freaking Jensen is pulling out the Big Bopper. <laughs> Happy birthday to Isai Morales, who, of course, was um Bob. And that's what's he was Bob Ritchie's brother. And that's what's happening. We got it. Oh, God, was he a dick in that movie. And I still would. And that's what's happening. It's the Kevin and Bean Show. K-Rock. Jensen, you're a uh, little bit of a politics head, as I am. Yes. Would you say that this is likely the first time a bill has ever been signed in California on a LeBron James reality TV show. <laughs> I would think this is a first for sports, Because <laughs> yes. I can't remember Reagan ever doing anything like this. Can no, you? No, he never went on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's sit-down talk show. <laughs> SB 206 was signed into law on LeBron James, uh, the shop TV show on HBO a couple of nights ago. And uh, it is this is the one that you've been hearing about, which is called the pay for, pay for Play, I think is what they're calling yes. it. Yes. Yeah, and essentially it gives student athletes the opportunity to have sponsors and to teach camps and to get... Uh, uh, endorsement deals and, and royalties all, on their jerseys or their all likeness. the stuff yeah. that the NCAA does not allow. And as you can imagine, the NCAA is not crazy about it. And we have so many questions about how this thing is likely to play out. And we thought, who better to ask than our friend Petros Papadakis, who is an expert on all things college sports, being a former USC Trojans captain himself and being the co-host of the Petros Money Radio Show on AM570. Hey, P, how are you, man? I'm right on the edge. You're, you're on the edge. No. I don't know what happens next, guys. Uh, yeah, uh, it's fascinating. This, uh, this is just a step, I think, in kind of a direction that we've been headed ever since. The profits went from the millions, tens of millions, to the tens of billions because the profits became so exorbitant because live sports became such a – uh, a commodity, something mm-hmm. people wouldn't uh, wouldn't DVR. You know, people want to watch it live. Right. So the commercial revenue is through the roof. So the revenue is through the roof. You know, when I was playing... But, Petros, let me ask you a question. The NCAA has always had, you know, a minimum amount of money to pay players, and they just never have. It's against their policy. It's not they didn't have the no, money. No, but it was always, you know, there wasn't, I mean, there was money being made, but you weren't going to be able, I mean, this doesn't, letting people uh, profit off their Instagram or, uh, you know, what what this limits, where this will go in the courts, uh, it might shock you to know that I'm not a lawyer. What? Uh, what? Get the hang up. Phone. Hang up. Can you believe it? I what mean, a waste it of crazy? Our time. <sighs> you might want to ask a Kavanoki or Bergener or something. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I mean, this is a step in the direction because the money got so damn big. That's that's my point. You know, where it? does this go from here? The NCAA, believe it or not, has a gigantic lobby. Uh, they will fight this tooth and nail. Uh, people don't want their money moved around. You know, people uh, don't want their money moved around. Meaning, the universities make enough they still yeah, they lose don't, it. I mean, they know where their cheese is right yeah. now. They don't want you to move their cheese, so they gotcha. have to go to some other route to find it. But NCAA players have never been paid. 
Well, and can it, we get the one? Can we get the one misconception out of the way? People say, "Well, they get their education for free." They get billions of dollars from their playing. It is not a comparison worth making. They're not making. Well, it, it used to be though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, maybe it, it did. When I played, it was. And you know, to be honest with you, uh, if you've lived a life, it's 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 not an easy life. You know, you, you it's playing football in college is like an eight hour a day job. Yeah, right. And. Uh, you know, really playing any sport in college is an eight-hour-a-day job. So, uh, and then you're going to school on top of that. Sort but of. You do sort of, sort of, of diligently, of family studies. If you diligently kind of like halfway do it, uh, it really is kind of worth it unless you're like me and you destroy your body and, and mind. Wow. Uh, but don't you think, especially in football, I mean, there are a lot of injuries. Don't you, do you think this is a good thing? Not, no, in a perfect you world, don't. football wouldn't exist, and we should not have revenue sports that are tied in with our institutions of higher education. None of it makes sense. So, I mean, trying to argue about it and getting all self-righteous is hypocrisy in the first place. I love woke Petros. Th- but there's nothing we I feel can- like we're going to the wrong expert, you guys. <laughs> He's right, though. <laughs> He's right. But football exists Listen, and I players play. And call games. I call games and shame kids for breaking team rules. And the game's brought to you by Bud Light. I mean, what the <laughs> hell's the matter with you guys? Uh, you know, I mean, we, we talk about kids taking supplements and we advertise supplement companies during the breaks. I mean, it's it's a giant cluster F. That's it, what it college is. football is. And it's, he, it's a mistake that it kind of happened. And here's where you're going to run into a giant wall. Okay. Okay. You can't pay everybody. Uh, Why you can pay you could pay Why? the football and men's basketball oh, I see. the right. revenue sports. Yeah, you're not uh, paying women's lacrosse. Well, there's going to be Title Nine. Title mm-hmm. Nine is a whole thing that states a whole bunch of stuff about equality, and that's going to go to court. Mm-hmm. So this is and first of all, if this does even go through, too late in the conversation for first of all, Pedros. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even start till 2023. And the reason, uh, Gav- the reason Gov- Governor uh, Governor Newsom did that, I thought, was standing in- r- ridiculous grandstanding BS. That's what I thought Bean it was, was intentional. Say, right? No, I thought it was intentional to give other states the opportunity, and other states are already investigating this, like New York, to kind of do the same thing. So the NCAA won't just be at war with California; they'll have to deal with three, four, eight, ten more states at the same time. Or he yeah. did it so we'd all be talking about this instead of the fact that he and our mayor here in LA are doing jack. For the homeless population. Oh, it just Boom, got real. Suck it. Alley. <laughs> Where is this going to end up, Pete? Do you think ultimately students will get paid, or no? This will this will all be shot down for the reasons that you've described, and it'll be the same old, same old with people making billion dollars off the backs of teenagers. You know, like whether or not you can get paid by Nike, and whether or not the school pays you right. uh, to play are two different things, you know, and they're kind of two different avenues. My idea has always been, uh, and it would be blocked by Title IX, but for the revenue sports, upon completion of 12 units per semester, you put, you know, $20,000 or something in the bank, and when the guy graduates, instead of being spit out into the world as a maladjusted, crippled human being like me, uh, he has $200,000 and a maladjusted... (laughs) <laughs> crippled human being, uh, but that that is uh, that's also going to be problematic because of Title IX. Okay, uh, so let's just continue so, to get the money under the table. Is what you're saying? Yeah, it'll just continue to be a gigantic cauldron of hypocrisy and yeah, let's and Reggie Bush it up. Yeah, white dudes and just we'll, handing... and we'll reveal some virtue, yeah. you know, through competition. It's not all bad. Right, <laughs> problem has been solved. Hey, P, I just want to check real quick before we say goodbye with our thanks, and that is, you're current on your medications, right? <laughs> right, that's what I was going to ask. You good? You okay, P? What are you talking about? Just ask your question. You feel it okay? Truth about stuff, or do you want me to say, "Hey, that was the coolest thing at the barber shop when they signed that bill"? And then what happened? I don't remember after that. Truth bomb, Petros is the best. Let him run. No, no, we love it. We just want to make sure you're good. You just started the whole segment with "I'm on the edge." (laughs) That's how you started. I'm not good. You're not good. Okay. No. Is there anything that we can back from Utah? Okay. Right. right. Okay. The week before that, I was in Nebraska. Okay. Right. That's where I'm going. (laughs) I love angry Petros. I really (laughs) do. Where are you going next, Pete? He's my favorite. Where? Coeur d'Alene. Freaking Waco. (laughs) (laughs) I'd be angry if I was you as well. I get it now. (laughs) All right. Pete, take take care of yourself, man. We love you. Okay. We're here for you. Love yourself. Yeah.
Love, love you guys too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye, question bye mark at the end. <laughs> it did go up. It's Kevin and Bean on K Rock K R O Q. A seven-time world champion in professional wrestling, you guys. Mm -hmm. Also an actor, a comic book writer, and apparently, I'm sad to report, a Chicago Blackhawks fan. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please welcome Phil Brooks, a.k.a. CM Punk. Thank you. With Kevin Beach on How are you, sir? I am. Uh, I, couldn't, I could not be better. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Do we call you uh, Punk? Do we call you Phil? What do you prefer? You can call me Phil. Uh, that's Phil? my name. Phil, okay. I, I've Phil never is. introduced myself, not even in pro wrestling circles backstage or anything, as anything but Phil. I've never been like, hi, my name is Punk. Because that <laughs> <Yeah>. sounds... <laughs> Mr. You know, that, Punk. That sounds, Make people call you Mr. That Punk. just sounds weird. Yeah, so. you meet some people and they're like, hi, I'm the great Kali. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I'm Jensen. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you at least get the opportunity to pick out your own name or was it given to you? No, I, 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 I picked it out when I was 15 years old. 15? Mm. 15 years old, rolling around in a backyard with uh, some buddies of mine. Yeah, I... Like I, you do. I was... My, my, I, my nickname from, like, an early age was punk anyway, mostly because of the music I listened to and <laughs> my attitude. So, I yeah, I was, I was CM Punk. What's the CM? Uh, long story short... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell everybody it means something different now, okay. just because it's it's funny to be just to mess with people. Yeah, sure. Okay. It's funny. The mischief is funny. So is that uh, what you're going to tell us now? Or? No, okay. I'll tell you the I'll tell you the real story. There, the I was in a tag team called the Chick Magnets. <laughs> <laughs> so think think fifteen I'm so, so glad fifteen that's year the real old story. yeah it's great. <laughs> so fifteen year old Phil trying to dress like. You know, bad guy like fat, chubby Shawn Michaels. You know, <laughs> nice. like, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. I like it. Uh, were you ever in a punk rock band, Phil? No, nothing official. Mm -hmm. um, and you've I, sung, you've like went up and performed with people before. Yeah, I've yeah. I've performed here and there. Um, one of my favorite local bands uh, from the Chicago scene was this uh, this like noise ska band called Hot Stove Jimmy, and mm -hmm. uh, they. One time, you know, I, I I was just friends with everybody in the band. They're like, "Well, come come play with us," you know. And I I I guess I did a tryout. I just didn't I just didn't make the cut. So I played with them a few times, but that's it. That's oh. fun. Yeah. And, and in your mind, was being on stage rocking out? Was that like every equal the thrill to being in the, in the middle of a, the you know WWE match? Just because it was something you loved so much? Yeah, you know, I, I think when you're a kid and you have you know, dreams of what you want to do. I, I think whatever you see people on TV doing or whatever you're into, like you, that's what you aspire to be. I haven't become a, a rock star yet, but you know, I still got time and yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I still got time. You're becoming quite an actor. This is far and away the biggest role you've ever had in any kind of uh, movie, right? Oh, movie yeah. or TV show. Far and away, you're the the star, and for much of this f film, He's alone, girl, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're the only you're the only face to look at. I know. I, mean, I apologize. <laughs> no, earlier today you were. Uh, Said over and over again in this room by other people, we thought it looked like John Hamm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You'll I'll, take that, right? I'll, I'll I'll take that as a compliment if John Hamm wasn't a, a St. Louis Blues fan. Right. right. <laughs> oh, yeah, understood. Yeah. 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 Got a discount on there. I'm really yeah. holding yeah. that grudge. Uh, but it is crazy because when you see people like Batista in a movie or The Rock, you're like, oh, that's a former wrestler. Like you, they can't. Right. They can't get themselves engulfed in a role. And I think the thing that's most impressive about uh, Phil's portrayal in this in this movie is like you do, it doesn't stand out in that way at all it seems like a dude no, you look a comfortable little, doing it a little dorky yeah <laughs> which is yeah quite the acting that it, I, well, I mean not really it's okay. not a <laughs> you just look less tough the now, uh yeah i just i just wanted to be very subtle with everything you know and not be over the top and i and i, I think it worked because yeah. i even see pictures of myself and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like me. And I've heard the John Hamm comparison. Uh, I get Bruce Campbell a lot now. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's one or two. Oh, Henry Rollins. You know, so these are all these are all cool, awesome people. Yeah. And people sure. are like, oh, yeah. Yeah. you look like a yeah. cool, awesome person. You're not but like, yeah. oh, there's Urkel or whatever. Right. Now, the, uh, <laughs> the film, by the way, yeah. is in theaters and on digital platforms on October the 25th. I want to make sure people get the name of it because it's called Girl on the Third Floor. And it is the perfect movie for Halloween. I mean, this is the type of movie that you want this type of this time of year. And um, Phil, the recap basically is that you, you buy a house in the suburbs and you're going to renovate it yourself. It's very old. It has quite a storied history. And you try to fix it up. And Allie has just been 
blasting you I mean, on and off the air today just... with how how bad your guy is on working tools. And that's, the, I mean, that's a big part of it. You're there for yeah, a reason to, be good to, at it. to mm-hmm. do it by yourself and fix it up. Your wife is pregnant. She's staying in the city, doing her job, making the money. Yep. But my God, like it's, you got to be better with the drill. That's the whole point of the movie, though. Like, <sighs> you know, I, I think horror does this better than any other genre to where it, it can be a movie about something so fantastical like a haunted house and you know murder and death and all this stuff but the underlying message is there, there's a social message in there mm-hmm. and, and and if you leave the theater thinking about that that's a good movie and i think we we did that job here you know then don don is a is a guy who has many, many flaws. Yeah. The idea behind the movie is the more he tears apart the walls, the more those flaws come out, and the house just kind of amplifies who he is. And the way the movie came together, uh, it's uh, we were reading that it's an actual haunted house? It is. It is. That thing, uh, it, it's got a lot of history. It's, the house is over 100 years old. Uh, it's on the corner of uh, two streets in Frankfurt, Illinois. Um, and what uh, went down in the real house, Phil? Uh, two... Travis Stevens, the the writer and director of this film, tried to make it his own. So he didn't lift their story, but he kept the names of the two murdered girls oh, I the see. same okay. in the movie as to you know as to kind of appease the appease the demon. So we didn't get attacked oh. on set every day. <laughs> so you were, you went to work in a house every day where people had been murdered in real life. Yeah, the one one girl was found down the street uh, wrapped in tarp next to the train tracks so a lot of that is incorporated into the movie they, mm-hmm. they just use the the lore and the the true story of the movie uh or, did you get the, a creepy vibe at all on yeah set, knowing i that? mean uh, everybody has stories about weird just stuff sitting there and you know when you're setting up a shot are you talking about like what's coming next all of a sudden the doorknob just turns no, no, door, no doors no, pop no, over. Yeah. Nope. No, <laughs> no, Talking sir. about two different areas. Do we set the shot up here? Do we do this? And, like, I'm just sitting there, like, watching people work and trying to learn and digest all these new things. And, like, all of a sudden, there's just, like, you know, uh, like the doors knock. And you're see, like, what? I work in a room with non believers. I believe all this. <laughs> and <laughs> I, and I, I, I think love everybody, I, every, tell me if I'm wrong, please, mm-hmm. but everybody has that experience at some point where you're in a room and, you're alone, but you're one hundred percent positive that there's somebody else in the room. One hundred percent. That is that house. Yeah. And it's never a I'd sexy run down, ghost. Like, I'll tell you that. No, it's never, never a sexy, sexy ghost. Like this ghost. One. Well, they're shooting something upstairs, right? And the crafty table's downstairs. So I run downstairs into the basement. And it's one of those things where, like, I'm fishing around, like, "Well, oh, what do I want to eat?" Mm, and then you're just kind of like looking over your shoulder, like, "I'm not alone." I, I, I felt that every day in that house. Oh, so so cool. across, across the street is a church. Like it is like literally perfect setup. Just like the other, like that was Into real. The movie, yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm getting I creeped out so now. I'm, all right. I'm getting creeped out. The movie <laughs> is called Girl on the Third Floor. As I mentioned, it's in theaters and on digital platforms at the end of the month on the 25th. Is there a screening going on in town that you're here for? I am Phil? here. Yeah, uh, I'm here for Beyond Fest, which is a an amazing really film great, festival. Yeah. I've I've been there uh, almost every night, just taking in movies, and I, it's it's fun to be a fan and. You know, everyone there is like, oh, we can't wait to see Girl on the Third Floor. I'm like, awesome. You know, we just share these moments watching these films on the big screen. Uh, but it is uh, screening tonight, I believe, at 7.30. Fantastic. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. crazy that you got Beyond Fest to be this week just, you know, because you knew that you had to be in town anyway. was going to be here. Yeah. So you did was, that. That's amazing. Smackdown? You got all of that together. When is SmackDown? Is that tonight? You know when, <laughs> when it come is. Back, when, we come back from, when we come back from the commercial break, a big announcement uh, right when we come back after this. K-Rock. <laughs> It's the Kevin and Bean Show. K-Rock. Phil Brooks, a.k.a. CM Punk, in studio with us now on the Kevin and Bean Show. Enjoying a little breakfast there, I see, Phil. Yep, yep. Glad you're keeping in shape for Friday night. That's good news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why? What's Friday staying, night? I don't understand what is happening. healthy. Okay, if anyone's paying attention to the world, if you're a wrestling head, <laughs> mm-hmm. this week has been quite CM Punk-centric. Mm-hmm. The idea being, he's it's the first time in his life he's out of a lawsuit. He's been in and out of lawsuits <laughs> for five and a half is years. Is that true? The first time in my life. Yeah, ever. <laughs> 
his entire since a he baby. Was sued when yeah. he was a baby. Since he was, he was a, a toddler. They cut the cord. They slapped yeah. me on the ass, and they're yeah. like, "I'm suing you." The guy came in with court orders, uh, yeah. and so he is free to really do what he wants. He mm-hmm. has this movie coming out, so he's everywhere. But more importantly, there are two rival wrestling federations that are that are you know kind of going at it right now, and right. people say that he is kind of being courted by both. AEW from the Turner Network and WWE, his old employer that mm-hmm. he has a quite a storied history with. I was an independent contractor, Jensen. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Not, right. An Not an employee. <laughs> that is important to address. Uh, the independent contractor, WWE. And so now he supposedly uh, this now week. Now you're just naming two things. Well, supposedly. The, what about a show Fox. on Fox Sports 1 about wrestling and you apparently have auditioned for it? You might be doing that. So you wouldn't even be working for the WWE he'd be because an employee. F them. Right. No, he'd be a Fox Sports yeah, that's what I'm saying, a Fox Sports employee. So, <laughs> so you mean to, so you mean to it. tell so you mean to tell me? Yeah. You would watch a show mm-hmm. where I talk about wrestling? Yeah. Free. Oh yeah. Will Free. Booker T be doing it too? What's that? But, okay, come on. What? Well, Booker T is on it. Yeah. And this Renee Young woman. Yeah. And then we would hope CM Punk is like a third a person. A third person. Oh, Renee's Renee's great. Renee's she's so she works for Fox now? and They've had rehearsals. Yeah. See. They may have had rehearsals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this whole thing is blowing my mind. Yeah. You're the but... belle of the ball, Phil, is what we're saying. Yes. I, I am and I'm not, though. I'm really not. I think people um, have, it, it's, it's taken on a life of its own. Really. You get that job. But then also, since they said yesterday that The Rock is coming back at SmackDown, you're like, listen, fine. I will show up, mm-hmm. uh, maybe not in a capacity of like wrestling, but then you take out the rock at SmackDown. Oh, do you remember? Do you remember? Let's do it. <laughs> How do you feel about this? Um, I I I enjoy the rock. I do. Right? <laughs> I don't think that's an answer. I feel no, like no. you're being a little we cagey here. I just, and, and I'm not trying to put this out in the zeitgeist. I, you know, hopefully, geez, hopefully people don't do this. But do you sure. remember the last time The Rock was in the Staples Center? When he called you? Yeah. On the yeah. phone? That's hilarious. Yes. Mid, yeah. mid, Amazing. Mid lawsuit with the WWE, The yeah. Rock addresses the fans who are yelling CM Punk. And uh, The Rock says, you guys want CM Punk? Which is not the thing you're supposed to say on right, the microphone. Right, and right. then he said, fine, I'll call Phil. And Let's he just... do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's do when is, when is the show? It's Friday. It's Friday. Friday. Let's yeah. do it again. Yeah. Friday. The Rock, okay. Dwayne, call me Friday. And Easily then they Phil. cut backstage and you're looking at your phone because you're there. <laughs> Boom, I just wrote it. I and mean, it's... let's be honest, that's better than most writing. It's, better, <laughs> it's better than 100% yeah. of anything yeah. they've had on the show <laughs> since I left. Uh, but is, is, it, is, is wrestling something that's still on your mind in general? No. 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 Hmm. It, and, it, and it hasn't been for, you know, I don't know, seven years. Mm. <laughs> so rumors kind of follow you. You're not following the rumors. No, I I, I try not to. I, I, I think social media as a whole is like a negative cesspool. And when you throw in wrestling social media, it, that's just like a whole different le- yeah. seventh level of hell. It's yeah. just like, because Punk, know, he, it's like his serious. whole life has been kind of wrestling until this kind of instance in his life. I mean, so much so his wife was a WWE uh, superstar as well. Mm-hmm. Their first kiss was in the ring and yeah. then she put him through a table. Yeah, that's that's real life. Like <laughs> Our first kiss was on national television. It's very romantic. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good story for the kids someday. Yeah, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you know, we'll be, I guess everyone's sort of watching with bated breath. Yeah. You have, you have, a, you have, a, you have a moment. Um, yeah, but, but uh, just if if nothing happens, please don't be mad at me. No. You know? <laughs> right. If, but if, if, there but really if something is... happens, can we be mad at you? Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah if, I, if, I, if I do something to make you mad, you can be mad at me. Okay. And, then, you... and then just sue me because <laughs> <'cause> everyone <laughs> else that's does. Apparently what yeah. you can, that's apparently what you can do for no reason. That's life. When yeah. you yeah. hear at almost every event that they are still chanting your name, what does that do? That is I, cool. I love it. Yeah, that yeah. is. Cool. Yeah, how can you not love it? Yeah, yeah. I and I. I how think... can you ignore those fans and not give them what they it's want? A great oh, point. Wow. Great point. Yeah. I love that you keep playing Cena's music. <laughs> I know. Mom. It's really, it's really the icing on the cake. You can't afford cult of personality. Over no. Here. Oh. <laughs> so sad. Phil, what do you want to do? Like, what's your dream job? Uh, my dream job is. Being April's husband and Larry's father, That's Larry's his dog. my dog. Yeah, dog. Uh, it, it doesn't pay well, but it's it's, <laughs> it's, okay. it's Does that really fact it costs a lot. Yeah, okay, it, you've already got that dream job though. Okay, yeah, for work, I know, but though, I, for, for work, work for what's work? your dream job? What do you what do you want to do? Do you do you want to keep going in the acting thing and make yeah. that your your full time profession? Yeah, I, I feel I've already been spoiled, so 
Uh, I can only hope and knock on wood that every experience going forward is going to be like Girl in the Third Floor. Or I also did a film with the Saska twins up in Toronto. Uh, they they remade Cronenberg's Rabid. Both oh. both amazing experiences. And I think because everybody's general mantra on set was no a holes, mm-hmm. you know, and and nobody was from. Wow, we I'm, should do that here, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know you could just say it. Start it every I was just yeah. surrounded, I've been saying it all year. <laughs> surrounded, and if you see the film "Girl on the Third Floor," you'll you'll know what I'm saying. But I was surrounded on both sets by uber talented people who were much better than me at doing their job and they just lifted me up and made me look way better than I really am. He has already written his acceptance speech for so if, I can, yeah. if I can get more gigs like that acting I Can I, I tell you what my it. hope is for next job? I want to see him punk book. Oh. I'm putting it out there. I'm putting out you the idea a of a well, book you, about you his, got stories. his stories, about you got stories. everything he went through. Because he's been honestly kind of quiet about everything over the years. It's like he lets sort of the stories tell well, him. That's what happens when you get sued for no reason. <laughs> you just, you know, your whole he life. legally yeah. can't say anything. But anyway, that's what I'm putting out in the universe. That's my Is that a possibility, right. Phil? I think it is. I, I think definitely after I shed these uh, frivolous lawsuits and come out victorious in both yep. of them, um, I, that I, I realize that I do have a lot of stories that are, are fairly ridiculous that I think the public should probably Fantastic. read and, what and are you, hear. Sweet. What are you doing Friday? Are you doing anything Friday? Uh, what's the date? God damn it. <laughs> I think it's the 4th, Friday, October 4th. I mean, because mm-hmm. today is October. It's October, it's October 1st. 4th. I love uh-huh. October. Uh, yeah, you do. It, um, you know, I don't know. Probably what are you watch, doing Friday, though? Probably watching hockey, because hockey started mm-hmm. now, it, it, and it, I, yeah. I'm yeah. super excited I, about yeah. that. I had another song. I, don't, I, I didn't want to play the Cena one again, so I just want to You should have. <laughs> <laughs> you should have. All right. Um, well, here, here's, my, here's my question, yes. and I'm really going to regret this uh, as I say it, but if you're... You know, okay. Let's let's pretend. Let's pretend okay. you're the head of a, a, a I'm billion Stephanie dollar. I'm uh, Let's just pretend you're somebody else. Right. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> pretend I'm you're civil. Yeah, yeah, let's hand. pretend Methodist you own a wrestling fan. company. Okay. Like, yeah. And then Jensen, okay. let's pretend you're somebody else and you own a wrestling Rody company. Rody Codes. Are you like, AEW? Okay. I'm, ro- I'm Rody Codes. You're Rody Codes. I'm yeah. F and E. He's Kikans. trying to pretend, yeah. you guys. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I mean, what do you? If if you want me to work for you, why is it my responsibility to? Uh, Move that forward. Shouldn't you be contacting me and oh, doing I something? See what's well, happening. That Buster over there's been texting you, which is some BS. At least I'll come to your face and say, "Oh yeah, I'll tell you another thing. Maybe I texted, but I've I've actually thrown out numbers and stuff. So like, you should do the same." Uh, maybe I have, but... Uh, oh, dear. Your oh, numbers dear. are poor. Not that it's happening, but the numbers are poor. <laughs> the numbers are poor. And then okay, there's some guy at Fox poor. Sports 1 like, hey, can I get in on this conversation? <laughs> and that guy just walks right in and walks by us? Yeah. I could be fine with that. Yeah. I mean, Phil, like, you, he's right. Go to you, him. He would change the either one. Either, uh, yes. Either one would need a pop culture moment. And you to get into like regular press, and you mm. need it now more than ever. Considering one of them is going into a billion dollar deal, the other one is coming. You know, starting is debuting. Sign him. So it makes sense. It's yeah. easy. Get it's it easy. done. He got, got it done. real quiet all of a Not sudden. Not saying a word. He did. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm eating it. my oatmeal. <laughs> Phil, do you do you miss wrestling? I don't miss wrestling. No. Do you um, miss the camaraderie of the either with the other wrestlers or with the fans? Uh, I, I for sure I. I guess maybe if I missed anything, it would be performing because there very much is a rush to, you know, your music hitting and going out and uh, being able to read a crowd and give them what you think they want, not necessarily mm-hmm. give the crowd what they want, you know, w- w- because as a performer, you almost have to be objective and be like, the crowd doesn't know what they want. I have to set, I'm gonna give them what I, I have to set that stage and tell a story and i i always uh appreciated and enjoyed doing that mm. i am right now googling living color seeing if they have any dates in la <laughs> great guys they're playing great great guys. Guys. staples on friday staples friday oh night. my god what? it's unbelievable this is that really be, that, i'm surprised they haven't done that yet is just give <laughs> the, the give cult of personality <laughs> yeah. the song i mean they they already get they got the guy that sits like me they get yep. the guy that tries to talk to them like me and they yep. get the guy who's got tattoos like <laughs> <laughs> Just need the song. Yeah, we'll uh, uh, we'll be watching Friday night, yeah. and we'll be looking for news. In the meantime.
time. Phil's movie Girl on the Third Floor is perfect for Halloween, you guys, and it is screening at Beyond Fest tonight at 7.30 at the American Cinematique, the Egyptian Theater. You can go to beyondfest.com if you want to see it up on the big screen tonight. Otherwise, it opens everywhere and digitally on Friday, October 25th. Great job with the film. Thank you. And I hope the people that you are referencing that don't exist speak up and get in t- I hope your phone blows up when you walk out of here and you start hearing some numbers you like, Phil, because we miss you. I'm the boogeyman. I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> All you. right, man. Thanks for coming in. Kevin and Bean on K-Rock. K-Rock. This day in history with old man Ruben. It's 1962 and the entire landscape of television is changed forever when The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson debuts from New York City. Carson quickly became the benchmark for late night hosts and he stayed on for 30 years. I worked as a security guard for the show that first year and the atmosphere was electric. I remember one night he had Janet Lee on and it was a great appearance. When it was over, he walked over to me and whispered in my ear, I never want that dumb broad on the show again. He actually said that about every woman he had on the show. He always used to say, I don't need him on the couch, I need him in the kitchen. Anyway, Johnny Carson was a pretty chill dude. (laughs) See, because Ruben is old. He's he's not young. No, shout to Carson though. He's, he's seen a lot of things. Hey, uh, Allie. Hey, Bean. You ready for some what's happening? Ew, why'd you sound yeah, so that creepy, was, right? Ew, that was not what you want. That wasn't ew. creepy. I just said, <laughs> isn't that creepy? <laughs> no, it's not at all. I just said, you ready for some what's happening? Yeah, we didn't like the way you said yes. it, though. Yeah. yeah. Daddy would like some oh. what's happening. Oh, no, sir. Nope. <sighs> Uh, let me. Uh, I want to give you guys something just to get this. Yeah, clean the palate. Stank off of us. How about a four pack of three day passes to L.A. Comic Con? Yeah. Kids love it. Going down right. October. We al- have a winner, oh, believe it or not. I haven't even oh. said when it is or anything. October 11th through the 13th at the L.A. Convention Center. You're going to meet the biggest names in comics, TV, movies, pop culture. You can see live performances, celebrity events, special guests, some shopping. It's got everything. What's going to happen? Who's going to win? Could it be you? <laughs> no, it could not. Oh, it could be. Give a call right now, 1-800-520-1067. And two winners are going to get that four-pack of three-day passes to L.A. Comic-Con on October 11th through the 13th at the L.A. Convention Center. That will be caller 11 and 12. Callers 11 and 12. Call now. 1 800 520 1067. I love you. So, Kevin, we yes. talked about uh, the big Super Bowl halftime show. It's J Lo and it's Shakira. And, and then it, we talked about maybe Pitbull right. doing something. Sure. Um, you weren't thrilled. I mean, they're t- they're saying to me, go get something to eat during right. halftime, mm-hmm. right. which I'm fine with because I like to get something to eat during halftime. Yeah. You know who also is not thrilled? Uh, two live crew frontmen, um, Luke. Mm-hmm. Luther Campbell. Dr. Does Luke. He think yeah. He should still. No, not Dr. Luke. Different guy. Does oh, he no, think- no. He did also go by Dr. Luke. Luke Skywalker also. <laughs> but you're talking about the other Dr. Luke, the producer. The producer. Yeah. Yes. Different names, but he has went by both. Um, my point is, is that he thinks he should be involved because he is also a musical artist from Miami. No. Yes. yes. Uh, no. He he wrote an op-ed in the Miami New Times, and he said basically the NFL were slapping Miami's talent pool in the face by booking J Lo, who's from the Bronx, and Shakira, who I believe is from Columbia, mm-hmm. and that there's so, a yeah. big enough um, talent pool in Miami. So he listed uh, Flo Rida, Rick Ross, DJ Khaled, uh, Trick Daddy, even Pitbull, who is now, as we know, in talks, but. He basically says that um, Jay Z should be better than this, but he's being used as a token. By that the way, is a defensible position. Not really, because you have to have somebody that has the kind of appeal for a halftime show. Pretty much appeals to everybody, and not all those names do. Also, isn't like setting up artists that are only from the city create kind of a weird precedence when you get to Buffalo? Yes, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Absolutely, like you're not always going to have someone in every city. Right. True. So. But so I think that's bogus. I mean, but it's uh, but I think it's defensible. I understand mm. where he's coming from. He's yes. like, look, we have a great talent pool here in Miami. But how about representing some of that in the halftime? Yeah, show? they don't need to be the headliners. They right. could they could do you know a little a guest spot like Pitbull is doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that should that should help. Right? Did he say anything about Weird Al? Luke Skywalker? Um, not in this article. Okay. Mm-mm. No. Mm. Mm. I would like though in the middle, like right after like J Lo performs and they're about to bring out Shakira. Then, like, two live crew just comes on and they're like, Pop, 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 pop. Yeah. They're like, face down, ass up, look the world, look 
That would be I'll, amazing. And I also don't think America is is uh, at a point where me so horny works for the halftime show. Either. I think it should. <laughs> Everyone's horny, right? Yeah, I don't think that's the image the NFL is going for. Is what I'm saying. Mm, I mean, they do off the field, so <laughs> that's true. Mm-hmm. They'd be funny. Just saying, you guys. I think it'd be funny as well, Alan. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Kevin. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Uh, what's up with actual celebrities dating bachelor stars? Yeah. We need to stop that, what? right? It's a trend. So you've got um, Sarah Hyland, who is engaged to a guy that was on The Bachelorette. Wells. Yes, Wells Adams. Um, Gigi Hadid is apparently dating a bachelor guy named Tyler. Those and are very common bachelor names. They Wells really and are. Tyler. Wells and that's Tyler. It. That's it. And now the most recent, Nick, wasn't he the super boring bachelor? Like that yes. everybody thought was super boring, I had no personality? Was. Well, it looks like he is dating Rachel Bilson. Oh, that's so funny. I, she comments on all... It's really funny. Someone pointed out she comments on all his pictures. Really? Oh, no kidding. So I guess I guess they are dating. Wow. So celebrities are fans of The Bachelor, too, it looks like. I don't know. Um, he has been leaving juicy comments on yeah, her Instagram. I, that's so funny. Writing nice mountains next to a selfie of her in a mountain shot. And she commented on a shot that he posted of them together and then... He slid into her DMs is what is being said. When I write nice mountains on a woman's Instagram post, <laughs> yeah, you should, you all should, of a sudden, uh, I'm the creep. You, yeah, He's dating very, Rachel Bilson. What's the deal here? Very different. You get the uh, the restraining order in the DMs. Right. 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 He gets right. the DMs. Right. But I think the fact that there was a mountain in the shot helps uh-huh. him. You just write it when it's like someone sitting there with their kid. Oh, I didn't realize that it had to be a mountain in the shot. Yeah. I get it now. That, I understand it. That's, that, that's on me. Yeah. Understandable, you guys. <laughs> Uh, when you guys think of the perfect family TV show, what do you think of? I don't, Cosby, I, the yeah. Goldbergs. <laughs> I, I don't need Cosby. like names of, of the shows, but oh, like okay. what makes up a perfect family oh. TV show? The Goldbergs. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I think for the most part, aren't most of them the families where the dads are just the idiots? Like the Simpsons, for example? Tens, okay. tens and the Goldbergs. Okay. And the Goldbergs, Stop sure. saying the Goldbergs. Well, the perfect family TV show should be a comedy with 10 jokes per episode and... Include a lovable animal. Only 10? 10 jokes is minimal. low. Step it up. Okay, well, this is a study of a thousand parents that found that their ideal show would also have three plot twists. A good versus evil plot, and it should be set on Earth. This is so stupid. What is happening? Who did this? 45% of parents also believe a funny best friend character should be featured prominently. Okay. Right? (sighs) 10 jokes. Yeah. Ten jokes per episode. I mean, that's probably a half-hour comedy. Yeah, but still, yeah, but it's that's still very enough. little. Yeah, that's that's shows like uh, uh, did Parks I and say Rec. there's also a lovable animal? Oh no, you didn't. And say a best friend that features that is, you prominently. Said it, you did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I bet the Goldbergs has twenty-five <laughs> mm-hmm. jokes per episode. And set on Earth. It is also. It is on Earth. I mean, that's yeah. true. That's tough. Yeah. To the argue. jokes are out of this world, though. Has best friends. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe a dog. We don't are, know. Are we sponsored by the Goldbergs? <laughs> I don't know. I've never actually seen it. Me either. You haven't? I've never oh, seen it either. No, no I've watched it. I've watched it when we've had uh, Jeff Garland in on the show because he's delightful. Okay. I've never seen it. So it's good. It's a good show. And it's the perfect it is a family good show. show. I'm sure. But is, it, it's I mean, not that I'm, this isn't me making fun of it, but isn't it like, uh, you guys remember the Goonies? Isn't it like all like references? Kind no, of? it's set in the 80s. It's set in yeah. the 80s, yeah. Okay. So I there's think. a decent amount of that. But it's it's really, <laughs> I, think I think it's so. good. <laughs> I, think. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. When your kids were younger, did you watch TV shows with your kids, and did you feel like it was a bonding moment? Uh, yes and yes. See? Well, that's, that was that... like Han- Hannah Montana and stuff and like Red, that. Red Shoe Diaries oh, really? and Taxi, taxi <laughs> wow. Up Confessions, <laughs> Real I'll, sex. I'll tell you what the family shows are that bond, and this is not a joke, is your America's Got Talent, your Mass Singer, your yeah. American Idol, The Voice. Those are the types of shows that families watch together. That everybody's into. I agree with the guy that doesn't know anything about families. I agree. <laughs> okay. I'm with him. Interesting. All right. Adler yeah. and I watch a lot of like um, home improvement shows. Do you? Oh, do you? Like <laughs> yeah. DIY type yeah. stuff? He's learning. He, he's into yeah. it? Yeah, he's into it. He, he teaches loves you. loves flipping houses, that Adler. <laughs> Guys, a lot of porn happening uh, where it shouldn't be happening. Oh. Like an electronic billboard in Auburn Hills, Michigan. 
attracted a lot of people on Saturday night after it started uh, playing porn right there on the freeway. Police were getting numerous calls about graphic images on the billboard. Dr. Justin Camo, one of the drivers who saw the video, said he nearly gotten into an accident because he couldn't believe what he was seeing. Here's his quote. I came across a billboard and it was something unusual. I saw two girls, lesbian porn. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy's quote. Was he calling to complain or to congratulate whoever made the decision? To I, he probably the, was like, I was wondering drive more interesting, yeah. what the title was because I didn't get to finish uh, watching it. <laughs> or or fish, okay. Or whatever. But is not only that, that much porno is happening in Auburn Hills, Michigan, on you know the side of a road. But promotional screens for an ASIC store in Auckland, New Zealand, were hacked at some point in the middle of the night and played porn outside of this ASIC store from 1 a.m. until 10 a.m. Oh. when employees showed up for work. Wow, that's long. That's. What she said. <laughs> oh That's my also god! Also, the name of the movie. The dumbest, oldest office joke. I can't anymore. I didn't hate it. Thank you. Do you guys, have you guys ever watch Goldbergs? All right, so That's birthdays a good for you. <laughs> Beck Bennett from SNL, Brie Larson, Christopher Titus, Zach Galifianakis, and Esai Morales, and. That's what's happening. Thanks, Allie. A 5 p.m. commercial free hour with Stryker and Klein is happening thanks to a random act of helpfulness in the SoCal Helpful Honda dealers. Tomorrow morning, an all-new Kevin and Bean show. <laughs> How does the queen eat a banana? Mm-hmm. Wait, what? On I'm the sorry, program. Again? How what? does the huh? queen of England uh-huh. eat uh-huh. a banana? Very specific. Very, Very specific, slowly, I hope. Oh. oh. Bean makes us guess, and uh, you have favorite pets on the internet. What's wrong with you? Right. Tomorrow morning on an all-new show. It's the Kevin and Bean Show. K-Rock. I'm really dumb, you guys.